Oh, this episode of Ain't That Swell is brought to you by Billabong. Uh, what can you say? Far out. Number one supporter since day dot. Always been with us, Smithy. Saw the light when it first came out of the swamp, this idea, and uh, jumped on board, rode this lizard into mammalhood, and uh, here we are now. It's just a couple of crow magnots talking surf and doing our thing, man. Uh, big shout out to the bong, Billabong. Uh, yeah, just doing fucking good shit out there. And, mate, uh, good news, the first sign-up, you know, the Bonkron, the $500 uh, Bonkron giveaways that you get if you go to billabong.com.au forward slash swellians, 500 bucks worth of Bonkron. And guess who fucking won the first one, man? Who got up? Andy Beswick, AB, the the Swellian Prince from, uh, I don't know where Bezzy's from, actually, but he's been with us the whole time. He's a full-blown believer, he's true a believer. He's a isn't he? Isn't he from up... Uh, he's, he lives in Billy Nudgel area, yeah. but he's from, uh, you know, the, he's a, a former prisoner of Mother England, escaped, done That's good, it, well played. Bezzo, Andy. mate. Hey, B, S- well Wellness uh, Summit alumni. Has he got a, uh, yeah, has he got a, um, a partner, do we know? Uh, yeah, I think he's been getting a bit of the old in out in now. Yeah, because I was going to say, now that he's uh, strutting around in his bonkron, mate, oh, you right. know there's a few raised eyebrows and a little bit of... That shit's just going to be way. all over the floor, 24-7, <laughs> straight on the ground, just nothing but shot rags. Oh, so good. Uh, still going, mate. Where If you uh, want to have the chance to be like AB and just lord it in the bonkron, just uh, sign up, billabong.com.au forward slash swellians. Uh, and you are in the running on your AP. Well played, mate. Well played. Straight to the boundary. And Vaughn, Patreon, it's pumping still. It is. We've got a, a, a bunch, of, a fresh batch. And I, I guess before we get into our loyal patrons, mm. uh, just worth mentioning to anyone considering chipping in that, uh, you know, we've put in 10 plus years of literal we blood, have. sweat and tears, dealing with crooked managers, uh, wrangling <laughs> pros for live shows, which is like hurting fucking cats. Oh. oh, my God, that's a nightmare. That is heavy. Thousands of hours of research and writing of gags and dreaming up and executing shenanigans for you. Mm. So, uh, you know, we're happy to do it because it's important uh, for us to rip in as hard for the working class as the working class rips in on the tools. Uh, I'm all about it. You know, yep. I know how hard the grind is. Out there, I spent my childhood and adolescence and early 20s on the end of shovels. Mm. Uh, so if you've gotten some joy, some laughter, some inspiration from what we do, well, maybe think of, think about chipping in a cappuccino's worth of dosh mm. into our Patreon account to keep us going. Uh, we love what we do, but uh, we do it for you. Yeah. And uh, we rip in hard on the gags, give a lot of energy up. Uh, so, yeah. Worth, you know, supporting what we do if you've gotten something out of it. Yeah, and also, like, you know, we're always going to have shows going out on, on the uh, the regular old channel, but uh, with that support comes the opportunity for us to create really good shit. That's what it comes down to. Time, Smithy, as you say, time is money. It's hard to fucking just donate and donate constant time. A lot of the coin that we do get here, it just goes into covering what we would have been earning in our freelance days. Uh, we still have to fucking grind that axe anyway. Mm. So, uh, yeah, just uh, any any help. If you want to join the Swillian Army, it's the fucking first step, brother, and uh, it, it will open the door to better content, more shows, and even a couple of, like, <laughs> little slot sidebar uh, projects that yeah. we can really snap off. Mate, there's some crazy shit in the works for Isn't Patreon there? subscribers. Uh, we're close to revealing a few of those things, so now's Bad. a good time to jump on board. And uh, shout out to Gareth Kennedy for chipping in a fiver. Yes, Gaz. Uh, John Trahey, another five bones. Ew. Uh, we got uh, 40 NOK from Cameron Songs. I don't know what knock is, what denomination uh, or currency that is. Knock? Yeah. Wow. I don't know. I, might, I, think, I, I feel like it might be a kroner or some kind of Scando uh, Dublin. But uh, <laughs> who else we got on here? Yeah. Uh, Scotty Liddell. Uh, Scotty oh, on your mate. Seb. Cheers, Seb, for the five bones. Uh, Rolfie. I hope that's not Rolf Harris, you sus cunt. But, um, <laughs> Rolf's we'll take dead, it. We'll take he's gone. Anyway. He's oh, he's gone. Red as he are. Good riddance. Yeah, he's, he's finished. Uh, uh, there's a Christine Derbage. Derbo! You'd have to think some relative oh, distant you know or close. There's a DNA connection there, Smithy. Oh, you know the core lords are chucking down. Uh, and plenty others. So, uh, well played to the lot of yous. Thank you. 
Yes, Shredheads, Waxheads, Kooks and Barneys, welcome to Ain't That Swell, the radio show dedicated to cutting fucking sick. I'm your host, the two-time Gold Cone Peace award-winning surf journalist, Scum Valley's finest himself, Mm -hmm. the punch-drunk pikey, the sultan of psilocybin, the maestro of micro-dosing And I'm joined here as always by my loyal co-host and friend, frontman of the Goons of Doom, former editor... Surfing World Magazine, Tracks Magazine, and Waves Magazine. Vaughn rinsed corn. Deadly. Good day, Smithy. How are they? Good day. It's fucking wet and soggy, isn't ah, it? It's wet and soggy. Uh, I've got the post Olympic come down. Fuck, I enjoyed the Olympics, mate. Yeah, it was. Really thoroughly, enjoyed it. Thoroughly enjoyable. There yeah. was uh, a little bit of a rip off. Ripped off. Yeah. Might have been robbed. At some point, but apart from that, it was a you know it was a, a halcyon <laughs> performance from the Aussies. The green and gold, it was put up a tremendous medal tally. Insane. Are you kidding me? Yeah. Uh, only for it all to come undone on the final day by some uh, break dancer who looked like a, a, a prawn in a net, <laughs> just flipping and flopping around. Uh, I loved her. Yeah. I was back in Ray Gun. I, I digged it. I was like, "Fuck, get out there, do your thing, have a crack." I was had a fair crack, all yeah, right. She had a crack, mate. Um, but yeah, it's funny, you know, up until Ray Gun hit the dance floor and started, uh, cutting moves, I guess is what you'd call it. Cutting rug. Uh, yeah. Medina kind of owned that Olympics for, for its most, uh, socially out there moment. He just got fucking pumped in the end by Ray Gun. Oh, he bent over and pumped to the great Brazilian. Fully pegged. <laughs> pegged into the wall she did. Well played, Ray Gun. Yeah. Uh, not too many. I mean, lots of people are pumping Medina, let's face it. Oh, yeah. But not that, not that hard, Smithy. Nah, no one has their him. way with them like Ray Gun did. Oh, Ray Gun, she just pulled out that big Pull. laser and just yeah. went zup, 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 zup. <laughs> Just fed him. Uh, you know, blasted his corn. Back to Sao Paulo. Yeah. Well played. Took the limelight fair off him. Straight off him. Just like, it was almost as if uh, he just got swamped. Totally tsunamied in the end there. Just, yeah, uh, yeah it was a, a wonderful thing to see. A good old-fashioned Aussie having a crack. Talent, eh, questionable, but still took the great Brazilian and just smothered him. It was great to see, mate. Mm. Happy some, about that. Some amazing moments. I, I love that 1,500-metre gold by Jess Hull from Albion Park, mm. the stabbing capital of New South Wales. I know where she got the middle distance pedigree from. Uh, Silver just, or gold? Oh, it was gold, wasn't it? Oh, I think was it, it was silver. silver. Oh, yeah, silver. Yeah. But uh, it, a, a, tremend, a tremendous run, nonetheless. Uh, in Albion Park, I'm familiar with it. It's one of them joints you, you stop in uh, on the way to the south coast mm. slabs and you just get your sausage roll and get back in the car as fucking quick as you can because yeah. it is a sketchy joint. And I can imagine that, uh, yeah, you know, when the fucking thieving, knife-happy chav scum came knocking, <laughs> she would have just been like, oh, I'll just take this kind of the deep water and then I'll rob you. <laughs> as soon as you puff out... After munching all them durries Mate, and uh, smashing the fried rice. Did she get, did she get a start? Or, what, did she do all the training on the Albion Park Greyhound track? Can we confirm that? Is that oh, where she did her laps? I'm sure she did a few Just laps. racing greys, the dish lickers? Yeah, she that's went right. around chasing the rabbit for I dinner? I mean, they go hard, the dish lickers, over 800, but yeah. over 1,500, it's Jess Hulls just pairing, oh, kicking them yeah. off the court, you fucking dog. Get that in here. <laughs> Well played to the Albion Park Queen. Yeah, amazing, amazing mm. performance. I was just, you know, I love when you know, familiar zones yeah. represent on the world stage and to see something else come out of Albion Park uh, apart from a, uh, you know, a, a, a kind of New South Wales Cup rugby league mm. turned bikey meth yeah. dealer. Uh, it's great. Great for the region. Really. No, wonderful, mate. Um, yeah, hard, you know, it was just an enjoyable couple, uh, couple of weeks. I mean, for me, it was just the surfing. Uh, I loved it. I, I had such a good time watching it. I, Finals day, as we already spoke about in Blitz, you know, it was a it was a pass mark. But well, you didn't enjoy the tipmas. Cool. You were not. Uh, uh, oh, I love tipmas. No, you know, I, I enjoyed the Aussie pool campaign and all that stuff, mate. But just just to see surfing on that good day, just deliver and fucking yeah, you know, there's been some conjecture that you know the the great Ripped surf. Off! No, I mean, it's that conjecture, but the uh, the great. You know, image of the Olympics being a kick out is just so typical. You know, it's so typical, isn't it? You go to the beach, everyone goes, whoa, when someone jumps off the back of a wave. No one gives a shit what's going on. No, no, never mind that he just rode one of the great waves of all time at that wave in competition. It's the kick out that gets all the noise. And uh, yeah, that got plenty of attention. Uh, yeah, Nickel in blowing up on Instagram about that exact Plenty of people that. were, but I was like, fuck, mate, who cares? It's just, a, it's a cool shot. Let it breathe. Let it mm. breathe. Mm. Let it be as it is. The kooks will never know, mate. They will never know. 
Um, any other takeaways for you? Uh, oh, Coley Vars surfing in the sand afterwards. That was pretty classic. Re- you know, risking pink eye and E. coli oh, yeah. and salmonella and all sorts of other uh, afflictions. I mean, I'll tell you, he might have got the rub on Jack Robinson in that final, but, uh, mate, he's been paying for it in a very severe, karmic way ever oh, since. Yeah. Mate, talk about it. He's basically a French eclair at the moment, a chocolate eclair, mm-hmm. going both hands, yeah. just spurting after his little dalliance with the saying. You Ooh. don't go near that. If unless, no. I hope they paid him well. Oh, yeah, that, 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 was, that was a risky move Fuck. after coming from the pristine waters of uh, Chapo. Yeah, straight to the sand where, you know, there, there was photos of the uh, long-distance swimmers just in neck deep in fucking trash, you know, as after they'd finished or before they swam their races. So, hope Corley's all right there, man. We are, uh, yeah, I hope he doesn't get some sort of a uh, you know, deep... Hectic pink eye infection that could yeah. rule him out of a uh, you know a, a future career. Yeah, some parasitic piranha just swims up his yeah his what are we allowed to call it? What it is a Jap's eye? Yeah, I don't know yeah, anymore. Oh, oh well, well, maybe yeah. Let's say uh, it, maybe it's an eye Jap. Eye jap. Mm. We've got to re- reverse the uh, the language now, Smithy, as we yeah. all saw through yeah. the reverse it all. Um, but you made uh, just before we cut into our finger buns. Just wanted to uh, alert everyone that movie season is well and truly fired up. We've got uh, Rob Machado in town. We're going to try and get a seat, seat with the great shaman of style. Uh, the great well-digging drifter. Oh, the, yes. The, the wonderfully, uh, what, what would you say, uh, fucking just gifted uh, man who never stops giving. Nah, it was great to see a former world number two on the tools, yeah. on the hammer and sickle for the people there That's in the it. remote recesses of, of Indonesia. Indonesia yeah. and, uh, not scared to get the hands dirty. Not, sta- not scared to get the hands dirty, not afraid of a couple of calluses, not afraid to slip a disc or seven uh, to keep the local Indonesians well yeah. hydrated. No, well, well played. played. Well played. Rob Machado in town. He's uh, along for the Endless Summer. Endless Summer is doing some sort of tour again, uh, He's doing a Q&A in association with it. I don't know if it's because he's mates with Pat O'Connell from Endless Summer 2. Or mm. Who knows? But check it out. Uh, that's touring around. And then um, the 2% crew, our boys from California. Wow. They're, they're doing a movie tour. Uh, dates, as far as I know. Actually, I might have them right here, Smithy. But, uh, yeah, Kolohe reached out to the Swellians. Uh even though we never did get around to running his interview on the show where Jeez, you lambasted him. Oh, didn't I? For uh, saying Good that, old-fashioned pasting. Well, the, the context of that was that he was uh, telling us live in front of a huge audience. I think we might have that audio. I'm going to try and dig it out. Like, not for this show, but for a future episode. That'd be great. But he's trying to tell everyone after you asked him, you know, what's the deal with uh, – what's your future looking like now that competition, you know, isn't going to factor into it as much? And he goes, oh, you know, I've never really cared much about competition. And you go, are you fucking kidding me, cunt? <laughs> the soul surfer of two oh, million years from it's Target. Never, never really been my thing, this whole competition act. And we're like, oh, okay. Anyway, it was one of the great call-outs. But, um, yeah, he did get in touch, Kolohe. Oh, it was good fun that night, jousting I- with the, the couple of seppos there. So, I-10. Th- yeah, they've got a, a 2% film tour going on. It's uh, Motorvale tonight, unfortunately, so that's too late. Uh, Newey, uh, Byron and Mermaid on the 15th and 16th. Keep an eye out for that. You can jump on their Instagram. Uh, Crystal Voyager is back at what? the Opera House. Are you George Greeno's me? iconic classic. Is he going to uh, get down there, flip the, uh, I don't flip think the so, thongs mate. off and just walk those nah. thick old feet straight in? No, way, he's too many, way too, too many, many bindies in his in his yard starting to see it in, for the upcoming mm. summer. You know how he hates bindies and brown snakes, clearly. Fucking hates them both. So uh, he's got a fair bit of work to do around the house. But uh, there is uh, a few crew going down. Brocky, Chris Brock's going oh, down nah. to... Uh, to sort of discuss that little uh, chapter, so keep an Jeez, eye out for you could you could do worse than getting a good old vial of liquid lysergy, just sculling it, necking it, and going straight in for a bit of Crystal Voyager. Oh man, tell me about Copping it. Cosmic the apricots, oh. just oh. Funk, 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 two up under the eyelids, Hendrix style, and uh, that would be wow, wow, that would be wow. experience. Hey man, that is worth watching though because that's the first ever. To my knowledge, the first ever inside the barrel footage uh, that Greno Dude. got on his surf mat with this fucking 200 kilo. You know, it's GoPro before GoPro. 
decades before. But I mean, you talk about sacrificing a few discs and vertebrae for mm. the, the good of the people. Yeah. Well, George Green, I set the standard early on with that. Yeah. A couple of roll-ins on the, the surf mat into a couple of endless funnels. The end sequence of that, uh, scored by Pink, Pink Floyd, Floyd, of yeah. course, yeah. Uh, is no, you're right. second to none in the pantheon of human species-created art. You- Makes... Pablo Picasso's cubism look like a fucking edge sketch. <laughs> uh, yeah, <laughs> you're dead right. It's one of the all time so then If you don't go in with some sort of uh, cosmic sort of gateway f- facilitator, you, you're tripping. You're, oh, well, yeah. you're not tripping. You're having a shocker. Yeah, that's you're what you're shocker, doing. That's what you're doing. Uh, and just finally, mate, uh, McCoy. Uh, Jack McCoy and Oki, they're doing a, a round two. Keep an eye out for dates on that. Their social media's got that covered. Conehead has just dropped Ooh. on Stab. Uh, we've been talking about it for months. Solly Bailey, most tube man of uh, 2024. Probably the standout for clip of the year so far. Kip Caddy, doff of the cap to you, neck and neck probably. But oh, Solly's just been getting so many waves. And uh, just finally, mate, uh, the greatest surf movie in the universe finally getting released on Stab next month. Wow. But in the meantime, uh, cinema release in uh, uh, the USA, if you're in the States, to all our uh, New Jersey crew, uh, heaps of swellings in New Jersey. Shout out to you, uh, California as well. Selected cinemas will be running it from uh, the 16th onwards. So. Magic. There's some of the, uh, the surf flicks getting around, Smithy. Jeez, bit on the silver screen. Well played. What's your uh, what's your go-to, like, sort of routine before you go and see a surf movie? Like, if it's on the big screen and you get a chance to sit in a room with a bunch of fucking heathen, reprobate, old school, you mm. know, core laws, swellians, let's call them swellians. Mm. What's your what's your uh, your modus before you head in? Uh, I like to, you know, the, the standard protocol, the the Hoff meditation movement. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, ideally, a surf and then a, a second little bit of movement in the arvo to get the energy right up there mm. and then just rip a couple straight out of the orchy, a <laughs> couple of droplets <laughs> under the eyelids. Ew! Tibetan singing bowl in the car park. Yep. Uh, maybe some chanting and, and whatnot. Just get the vibration yeah. at full throb, the pineal pulsating. That's it. Uh, nice and empty just to, to pack it mm. fresh vige. And, yeah, just sink back into that chair nice and high on endorphins and adenosine triphosphate and just cop it clockwork orange style straight in the pupils. Yes, yes. Uh, what's that called? Pavlov's dog. That, that match sticks under the eyelids just to prevent any... Any little fucking morsel of that screen from missing out on your complete optic. That's right. And don't forget a, a, a little spack bucket for the drool. Oh, uh, yeah. Love it, that. Because it's inevitable that you're going to be fucking that enraptured. Uh, you're going to lose some motor skills and start to that's drool. That's true, so man. It's all so part of it. Get, oh, out part of it. get out there. It's a community event. Try not to cream your pants, too. That's always embarrassing. A big meringue stain oh, yeah. on the pants as you're making your way out of the cinemas. <laughs> Finger buns. <laughs> Number five. Ripped off! Ripped off! Robbed! You fucking You me. robbed! That guy got full of shit, Smithy! What a disgrace! Oh, mate. I mean, uh, the wall of positive noise descended after Coley Vast's famous win at the end of the road there, but it wasn't tricking us for, not to our well-trained nah. eyes. We were all over this from day one. And well, you me. were, you were, you you enlightened me, and then I went on a full blown. I, I actually was depressed for days after this. Mm. Depressed, couldn't get out of bed. I was yeah. absolutely devastated. We burst the bubble of Olympic joy, but it was so bizarre the lack of critical discussion about this very controversial decision not mm. to give Robbo priority. Uh, we aired it on the Instagram thread, and it went fucking hamburger. Did it? A lot of input from the Swellians, mm. overwhelmingly siding with Robbo. Not well, yeah, should have been given priority. Mm. And uh, look, the thing is, this is like the biggest controversy in professional surfing, probably since the Machado Slater high five at Pipeline, <laughs> uh, which you know again was essentially a discussion about priority. Mm. Slater getting the priority nod over Rob and, mm-hmm. and and just caning him in all time conditions at Pipe. So. There needs to be a little bit more investigation from mm. the professional yep. surfing punditry and media. I mean, can you imagine like state of origin or a grand final being decided by a flimsy call and there being just crickets, mm. tumbleweeds, mm. no discussion? No, it doesn't happen. It doesn't, doesn't happen, happen, mate. No, it doesn't. Uh, 
This was alerted to us, and a big shout-out to Critter Salisbury from down there, uh, North Ave's finest. Um, yeah, Critter sent us through the rule books, the actual pages out of the ISA rule book and the WSL rule book. And there is no question here, Smithy. There's no grey area, mate. Paddle for a wave, block it. Priority is instantly given to the other surfer. So, yeah, there, there is no grey. There is no, like, weird Olympic rule that doesn't convert over to oh, – sorry, that is, is separate from the, the rules that we all know. And uh, or think we know, so yeah, very shocking, mm. insane. And BL was on point. You know, he talked about it for a good minute after it happened mm. on the broadcast. Uh, it was strange how many people didn't even know that it had happened. Mm. I guess maybe they're watching the the, the heat highlights, or maybe uh, they just forgot uh, in, in the the sheer kind of champagne cork popping. Well, I, there was another aspect to it, which is there was no front on view of it ever. It was just this weird, smoothie, like kind of coming around the corner drone angle that never really exposed too much other than like this weird sort of two dots and a little bit of a, a scurry. You zoomed in on it, ran it on the, on the web. It looked clear as day, but in the actual heat of that moment, it didn't have the same sort of like, it just didn't have the same clarity as those, mm. those sort of high res front on shots. I've got the clip on my phone. I tried to put it on Instagram, but they ban it because the Olympics, you, oh. know, you know, they don't let you put clips on. And Josh Fuller, Cabacore Lord, uh, you know, kind of naughty's pro surfer, mm-hmm. HPC employee from memory. Mm. Uh, he made the very good point. That there was no replays of it. The biggest moment in professional surfing since the Slater Machado debacle mm. in what ninety five, mm. and there's not a replay of it. They have fifty thousand drone angles covered. They got more drones than a Pakistani wedding, <laughs> and yet we don't get to see a replay of this moment. It's bizarre. <laughs> like it, it, it's smacked of conspiracy. Yeah, dare I say yes. it? Right from the get go. It's made right. It's reeks of bucksheesh, bucksheesh all over the place. And of course, the Anzac diggers cop it again from the aristocrats mm. in the IOC. What a disgrace! Yeah. Ripped off. And uh, I know that there's a finger bun coming up that might point to uh, maybe some sort of Maxis moment as well, Smithy. Mm. Uh, we know that France is indebted to these uh, Pacific atolls where they oh, big time. did quite a little bit of fucking underhanded, nasty business uh, throughout the 90s and previous to that. So Yeah, they own a bit of gold yeah, plus some. you reckon? Oh, yeah. Maybe. Keep the locals happy. Classic distraction. Uh, but, yeah. Anyway, look, mate. Um, what a bummer. What a bummer that it had to end like that, eh? Yeah. Stinks. But, I mean, fuck. Some people also made some points. Long game, yeah. You know, uh, along the lines of, yeah, but Jack wouldn't be able to have caught that wave from where Coley caught it. <sighs> it, it it's like, come on, mate. Are you dead set? Pot like, way. it may not have been a 9-5, hey. but it could have been a 10. It could also have been a 9-2. In any case... He is Mate. the Vortex Shaman. You don't doubt him. He, uh, and, yeah, he's not probably going to take off and, and get a, a run-up like Coley did and, <sighs> and weave and weave. It's, it's going to be a different approach. Who is But the, you don't question who Robbo's Who is mate. the fool that is saying that Jack Robbo can't make any tube ever? Mate, nah. he's the glitch cone master. If anyone can do it, no speed, tail sliding backwards under the lip, uh, late drops. He'll come shooting out of that thing with... Flames coming out of his asshole, dude. Mm. I guess what's also interesting about it is that yeah. uh, the priority, it wasn't decided, so therefore it was still a free-for-all at mm. that point, and that might have been what pushed Coley so deep on the reef mm. and made that an extra special make. Yeah. Uh, but at the end of the day, the priority should have been Jack's. So you, you don't get to have your cake and eat it too, Vaughn. Nah. Well, you have the inside and you don't go... Pass on the fucking... In this case... The card, the cork. You did get to have your uh, cake and eat it. As oh, Marie yeah. Antoinette once said, let them eat cake. Let them eat Paul it. And scoff that cake oh, all, the way to the, all the way to the Sen, where he's probably got, as we said, you know, dribble. All sorts of toxic dribble just down the back of his shorts as he holds up his medal in front of the Eiffel Tower. Oh, mate, he'll be regretting having an old-fashioned case of French cake face when he was just spouting cherry seeds mm. out of his... Tightly clenched corn. Fink, fink, fink. <laughs> Nasty business. <laughs> da- dastardly E. coli. Uh, crazy story, too, after winning the gold medal, mm. happened to fly direct to Huntington that night and perform in the US Open. And then back in France, surfing yeah. in the Seine River. It's a, quite the schedule. He did it? Yeah, I believe did, so. Did, no, I don't think he could have. That, well, that, that, that's what I read. I don't know. I haven't checked the results. I to think see he where must he... have brushed the USA and gone straight to the party. Surely. I can't even imagine it. The early reports was that he had his grovel quiver packed and had a flight booked mm. that night. 
after winning the gold straight at US Open. Well, there's I mean, also a rumor that that floating casino that they had off the uh, off the boat, sorry, as the uh, the floating Olympic Village turned it on that night, and apparently, pump fest galore. Heard it here first. Uh, can't confirm where those rumors are coming from, but. So maybe the athletes cut loose after the uh, final hoodoo when Corley got the magic, mate, and I don't think he was getting on any planes the next day, bro. <laughs> hey, um, uh, one other takeaway from the Olympics, which I did allude to. Oh, any, anything else on the uh, the Corley, uh, Jack Robbo conundrum, Smithy? Not really. Just the sour taste. Oh, it? yeah. It's, it tastes like... It's uh, yellow cake, uranium, yeah, it's u- urine. I've dipped my finger in a packet of yeah. Truckies toothpaste and I'm just, yeah, just struggling. Furry teeth. Oh, it's fucking something sour down the back of your, your neck. But... um. Yeah, uh, I wanted to get your take on this. It was a post by Philippe Toledo saying that Gabriel Medina got robbed, robbed of a gold medal because the Olympics weren't held in a wave pool. Like, where? Where do we go with this after one of the all-time great (laughs) pocket fill melts? uh, You know, he comes out and says Olympic surfing should be in wave pools. Like, oh, man. Like... is he literally in the stocks, pants down, asking the world to just kick his cheeks into oblivion? Because that's what it feels like he's doing. He loves it. He loves the fucking teardowns. Like, why else would you go public after what we saw at Chobes and say, we should be in wave pools? Like, because he lives in one deafening echo chamber of sycophancy mm. and uh, just a positive wall of noise. I couldn't and believe he it. It has to be completely insulated from what the the surfing world actually thinks about him. I mean, yeah, it's a wild thing to say, particularly considering he's saying it, oh, yeah, it's for Gabe's. Mm. Gabe's benefit that we should have the event yeah. of the wave pool. It's not about me. Oh, no, It's no. all about G- Gabe was robbed. <laughs> it's all thinking about Gabe and how ripped off he was. <laughs> what about Gabe? What about Gabe? Why won't someone think about Gabe? <laughs> Give it a break, puckerist. Oh, Just no. sack up a knife on already. We don't want to know... About your opinions after one of the most dismal performances <sighs> in pro surfing history yet again. Oh, the end of the mate, road. Honestly, when he got blown out of that one against Billy Stammond, I was going, fuck, what a bummer for Billy. Because Billy like looked like he wanted it. Uh, and you know, credit to, to Phil. He glitch coned his way through a pretty meaty phone ball, but like it was just twenty four hours of not even twelve hours of glory. You know, the ghost went quiet. Everyone was going, Okay, yeah, small doff. Let's let's agree. But even you and I uh, as we were doing the daily uh, Olympic reports, we're going, hmm, let's just wait till this swell kicks in, see what happens here and what happens. Cleaned out, absolutely humiliated, and what happens after that? Fucking he comes out saying, Gabe, what about Gabe? Why won't someone think of Gabe? It's not fair, mate. Oh, tears for his countrymen. Hard to swallow, but... Uh, Look, man, uh, I'm worried. I'm, as I said, I'm d- deeply concerned that we're going to the pool. I can't actually see any other option at this stage. Like, they're not going to be running it in any sort of Pacific or fucking Caribbean sort of like you know cyclone swell. It'll definitely be in the in the goat pool. That's awful news. <clears throat> and what about Trestle? Do this Trestle? though. Why don't we? Like, you know, there's there's three or four gold medals up for grabs in skateboarding. You know, for different disciplines and stuff. Like, if they want to have it in the pool, they've got to have it in the fucking combative arena of the ocean as well. Like, there's no combat at all in the pool. Zero. Like, there's none. Mm. Like, other than pool jousting, where you maybe fucking start doing judo and karate uh, or trying to kick people in the face as you're fucking flying down that, you know, K-long fucking wave. There's nothing, man. There's no combat. So it's just basically a, a dancing bear routine, which is just so uninteresting to me. You bring up a good point. I wonder if they could connect the left and right into a shorey closeout. So after ripping it to bits, they then joust off on the shorey. Ah, that would be good. Yeah. Michelle Perez, straight out of retirement for Tahiti. Hey, 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 hey. <laughs> Zena. Yeah. Uh, yeah, amazing. And, and uh, yeah, I don't know. I'm, I'm, I'm concerned. I, I feel like that needs to be addressed deeply. Yeah. Anyway, there you go. Last word on the Olympics. That's that's my last word. I'm just fucking. I'm a little bit weak. Dad. Oh, Carissa Moore too. Doff. Doff to the Queen. Wrist woke. Calls it a day, Smithy. Um, I think uh, I will. The Surfers Journal has just released a podcast with Brissick uh, and Carissa, which I'm, I'm going to dive into because I'm quite curious to see what he, how that conversation goes between you know the the 2000 gold cone piece award winner 
and uh, the five-time world champ and Olympic gold medalist. So oh, we'll check that out. But She's so wouldn't pure. it be nice to get Reese on a, on a live show and mm. introduce her to some Australian swelling energy and oh, swelling so energy? Good. Yeah, just cleanse us. It's like the equivalent of having the surfing's version of an evangelical screamo priest up there. You just mm. feel that purified you do. and cleansed mm. after an audience of Chris Moore. She's one of the most wholesome, nice, kind, and uh, undegenerate that's even a word, mm. pro surface of all time. I agree. But uh, what what would we expect the Swellians to bring to a night like that? I mean, we know that uh, the gr- the great goat saw a full moon in the in the Torquay mm-hmm. par- car park. Like, any chance of an open clam in the car park as Riss leaves a Swellian show, a Swelliet, willing to, you know, open the holiest of holies and, mm. and glorify our, our great queen with... Something like that. You'd love to see the 21 clam salute on the oh, way out. That just would be insane. <laughs> golden showers all around. Yeah. Spraying the limousine as she exactly. makes her way out, giving the old queen wave. Mm, the queen uh, wave as she goes past, and it's just a, a non-stop 21 gun queef as she drives out of the car park. <laughs> Next level. <laughs> oh, oh, how good. It we would can be only nice. Hope. Well, let's get the swell, Swelliette army onto that one oh, yeah. for sure. Um, number four. Vaughn Stab Magazine did a deep dive on Benny Lowe's axing. Mm, what did we geez, learn? Oof, mate, it's... Uh, I see. It, just when the Olympics, you think you're done. It just keeps giving. It does. Love it. Uh, yeah, heavily controversial uh, if you ask the Brazilian corner of the surfing community. They were filthy. Shout out to Pedro Scooby. He was the guy who fucking outed Benny Lowe, mm. got him sacked. Yeah. No love lost there uh, from the Brazilian big wave legend, I guess, in air quotes. Uh, so this is what <laughs> happened. Uh, the, uh, the Instagram story was reposted by the Brazilian big wave surfer and TV commentator, Scooby, yep. who said, imagine a Fla flu match a day before, so Fla Flu, that, that's like Flamingo versus Fluminese. They're the two big Brazilian football teams. Okay. Um, he goes, uh, imagine a Fla Flu match. A day before the football referee goes to meet Gabby Gol, who's uh, a famous footballer. Are you kidding me? This is a serious entity. The Olympics, this shouldn't happen. They are both Australians. Uh, so that was Scooby's Instagram post outing Benny Lowe and uh, Bidet and uh, Ethan Hewing. Mm. And so it turns out that there's actually a lot of grief, uh, an old-fashioned Brazilian queef, if you will. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, with Benny Lowe and how he's been scoring Brazilians, allegedly. Mm. Uh, so this goes all the way back to the 2021 Olympics in Tokyo. Um, Scooby was referenced, referencing a story that was reported on Surf Hardcore, uh, a non-ironically titled Brazilian Surf podcast, I believe. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Uh, Oh, sorry, yeah. Surf Mag, and then uh, it came from the podcast Por Dentro do Tua. Benjamin Lowe, this is a quote, has a history of scoring Medina unfavorably. During the last Olympics, Lowe gave the Brazilian surfer some of his lowest scores. We showed that in the last Olympic Games, he always judged Medina below average, Mm. while other surfers received higher scores, said Marcello Boscoli, Mm. who researched the judging of all the heats in Tokyo where the Australian judge was involved. So here's a Brazilian journalist alleging conspiracy Mm. against the great Gabriel Medina by Ben Lowe. Uh, hmm. Stab then said had had this to say while the phenomenon they mention is based off a very small sample size four heats this Ben Lowe <laughs> anti-Medina narrative has been maintained by Brazilian fans and Medina himself for three long years all of this in the eyes of many Brazilian fans centres back around Ben Lowe who they believe directly contributed to Medina's losing result in t- Tokyo in which he lost to, to the big the great Owen for bronze uh, this is good for us, a representative of Team Brazil told Stab. Mm. If there's no photo, nothing probably happens, but the situation is clearly not right. Um, complicating the matter further, Stab goes on, Lowe mm. has served as a WSL judge at varying levels for 18 years, having officiated over 100 CT events in that time, including m- many including Medina and Ewing. If it's concluded that his actions in Tahiti were against standard judging protocol, it's possible that his employment at the WSL could be affected as well. We reached out to the WSL for comment and received the following response. 
WSL is aware of the situation and respects the ISA. Respect! Plenty mm. of respect between the WSL and ISA. Mm-hmm. Respects the ISA now we got to respect. decisions regarding this matter. The WSL will be reviewing the information as it pertains to our officiating teams moving forward. Mm. Strong words. So low... This is a quote, low tends to underscore waves, writes Evan Quanstrom. I believe he was the journalist at the Inertia who did a, a proper deep dive oh, on yeah. the statistics. Yep. He judged 16 heats that featured Brazilians and or Australians in the Paris 2024 Olympics before his removal. 22% of the time he scored above the average and the other 22% of the time he hit the score exactly on the mark. When you look at the breakdown of scores, he actually underscored his compatriots more than the Brazilians. Mm-hmm. His Australian scores were on average 0.16 points below the average, while his Brazilian scores were on average 0.11 points below the average. In conclusion, at least at the 2024 Olympics, the claim that Lowe unfairly scores Brazilians doesn't hold water. Case closed! <laughs> <coughs> Smithy, I'm glad that uh, that was cleared up because it is uh, it's just disgusting, really. I mean, it, it look, I agree, it's not the best look, you know, to have like photos of, of you hanging out with fucking people from your hometown when you're a judge and they're from your home. Like, I don't know, fuck. It just the thing that I can't get my head around is like Brazilians aren't doing it tough in the results. Like they're fucking cleaning up. They've been the dominant nation for. What is it? Ten years now, like uh, Medina, Felipe, Italo, Adriano, like fucking. How many world titles do you want? Is this just like uh, that traumatic stress that carries through the generations? Like, sure, back in the nineties, you could probably argue that they were getting fucking stitched up for poor style, hunger, like just the the fucking desperation to just want to win and and putting people in situations they didn't enjoy. Maybe back then there was something to argue about. But what are they whinging about, bro? Like, the numbers don't hold. That's a fact. Uh, Ethan's getting completely rinsed by uh, just, you know, fucking waves and waves of Brazilian fucking crew who are buying into this narrative. It's fucking ridiculous, man. I don't know why they're whinging. There's actually no proof that they're getting ripped off at all. If anything, they're getting fucking juiced. And uh, I'm not feeling it. I'm not feeling it. I don't think there's any reason for it. And uh, Benny Lowe and Ethan are both copping the full fucking front edge of this conspiracy that the Brazilians are peddling that doesn't actually exist, bro. Mm. Trippy as. Do you reckon they're high on their own supply? They're all just smashing kilos of Bolivian ether wash and then just furiously smashing their thumbs into their iPhone screens? It could be. Actually, it could be that, that, you know, when you're at the top, and you just think everyone's out to get you. That's that full mm, power struggle. Like the, style the, paranoia. Yeah, well, the king the king is like, fuck, who's out to get me? Who's out to get me? They're all out to get me. They're all out to get me. They're all got a bit of this going on. Have a good sleep, cunt. Just get a good bit of kip under your belt before you start screaming yeah. conspiracy and backsheesh from the top of nah. the Christ statue there in Rio. It's a disgrace. It's a disgrace, and uh, I'm not going Don't besmirch the proud yeah. name of Benny Lowe. And like, Don't bring him into this. Look, Australians, yes, they can be pretty fucking, uh, you know, old school in the way they communicate their sort of uh, yeah, their perception of Brazilians and Brazilian surfers. Especially. Diplomatically put, well put. Yeah, 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 yeah. They can be uh, not quite diplomatic when it comes to sort of expressing their frustrations with surfing with Brazilian travelling surfers, of course. Oh, what's wrong with fucking but, Brazos? You say that's politically incorrect? Well, I don't know, but I'm just saying that they're going, fucking Brazos, Brazos this, fucking Brazos that. But actually, you know, maybe, is that all it is? Is that they're just like going, everyone's against this on the back of that? Because it ain't happening in heats, bro. It ain't. Ever since Fanning lost that world title to fucking Mad- oh. to, to Adriano de Souza on the back of a, a, a grossly outside chop hop, Jesus, it's just all gone Brazil's way, and I've had a gutful for listening to Wingen. That's what I'm sick of. Yeah, you didn't hear us screaming conspiracy at the top of our well, lungs after yeah, we yeah, Number three, Chopu. Sorry, Tapao. Mm. Is radioactive history, Vaughn? Uh, this is a story from the New York Times oh, about wow. the legacy of nuclear bombing in Miraroa Atoll there mm. in French Polynesia. It was used as a testing ground for the most lethal weapon ever invented. And you wouldn't believe it, but an unpredicted little gust of wind blowed an old-fashioned 
black cloud filled with radioactive jizz mm. over to Chopu, dumped its load uh, on the local people there, yeah. and they've been struggling with thyroid cancer and elevated levels of who knows what in their bloodstreams ever since. Mm. So this is no joke. When we talk about French colonialism and the hangover of this colonial legacy mm. and that it maybe is a little bit rich of them to be not only holding an Olympic event in Tahiti, mm. but claiming Tahitians as their own. Mm. Uh, this is what we're talking about. Mm. The French researchers calculated carefully... Predict- so this is the an excerpt from the, the article, yeah. Horn. Yep. Um, the French reser- researchers calculated carefully predicting the interplay of wind, weather and radiation. But on July 17, 1974, the mushroom cloud from France's final atmospheric nuclear test did not rise as high as scientists had anticipated. Without the winds of a higher altitude, the cloud of radiation barreled directly toward Tahiti, some 740 miles away from Miraroa. What happened next was laid bare in the declassified French military documents. Scientists soon realised where the prevailing winds were forcing their radioactive cloud. It would take nearly two days for the fallout to reach Tahiti, yet residents were not made fully aware of the risks. Chopu concealed a secret behind its sunny tourist brochure seascape. Unbeknown to its residents, Chopu recorded, according to declassified French military documents, some of the highest radiation readings on Tahiti, French Polynesia's most populated island, after a radioactive cloud unexpectedly drifted overhead in July 1974. So here's a few stories from some of the victims. (coughs) Miss Perroa's siblings who like other children then were particularly vulnerable to the malignant effects Mm. of a nuclear fallout developed the kinds of cancers associated with exposure to radiation other relatives were diagnosed too and other villagers died a few years ago miss parua went house to house in chopu a village of 1500 and discovered 60 residents living with the disease even as mayor she had not realized the full toll on her community In 2010, after years of refusing to recognise the health consequences of three decades of nuclear testing in French Polynesia, the French government began a process, Mm. bureaucratic and buried in paperwork, of recognising and compensating victims of radiation-linked diseases. One of Miss Parua's sisters, who had been diagnosed with several cancers, was among the successful applicants. But no amount of of official recognition, Miss Parua said, could cure her. I am happy that we have the Olympic surfing and I am proud that everyone in the world will know Chopu, Miss Pro has said, but sometimes when I see the suffering of my family, I hate France. Mm. Uh, so President Emmanuel Macron of France visited the territory in 2021 and acknowledged that the state owed a, quote, debt to French Polynesia for the 193 nuclear tests. We did it here because we said to ourselves, it's lost in the middle of the Pacific. It won't have the same consequences. Oh, Oh, yeah, no, not for you. (laughs) Unbelievable. President Moatai Brotherson of French Polynesia said that four of his family members had died of diseases that can be induced by radiation. His grandfather was buried in a coffin lined with lead because of fears that this radioactive radioactivity in his body would leach into the soil. Uh, Mr. Brotherson gave a speech at the United Nations pushing for a formal investigation into the damage caused by the nuclear testing and for a peaceful decolonization of the territory. The ruling Tavini Party, which has called for independence from France, was founded in the late 1970s with a singular mission mm. to urge a halt to nuclear detonations in French Polynesia. From a political standpoint, the issue of the nuclear tests has long been superimposed on the quest for independence, Mr. Brotherson said. While the tests may have now stopped, people are still dying as a consequence. The French state needs to take responsibility. Mm. <sighs> Fuck. It's bleak. It's, it's bleak. fucking dark. That's heavy. It's so heavy. Yeah. I mean, he nailed it, didn't he? Oh, we just thought we just thought it wasn't gonna affect anyone out here, man. <laughs> Fuck, what dude. a bunch of fucking but I mean, centrist, it, left, woke, globalized, Marxist, capitalist gibberish. Oh man, fuck that sucks. That's a shit story. And uh, well, what's the what's the the go forward from here, Smithy? What's the actual like? You know what can what can we do, man? How do we do something? Ah, oh, fuck. 
I don't know. I guess we can just talk about it as a yeah. start and uh, maybe suggest no more nukes, Macron. Yeah. Uh, and cough up, you colonialist cunts. Give them a bit of dosh. I still sort it out. Were they doing nuclear tests in the 90s? I yeah. feel, feel like that was still were. going, man. In fact, Simon Jones, uh, former guest on the program yeah. and shares the office with us. Yep. Uh, his son's just outside the mm. studio right now. Was caught up in the protests. And uh, we'll get him on the podcast again yeah. uh, with Tozer pretty soon to tell this story. But yeah. Uh, he was you know, one of the, the few people in the community who could speak uh, fluent English and he ended up getting caught up on stage mm. to kind of front the protest about these nukes and uh, communicate the concerns yeah. of, of some of the local villagers. Uh, so, yeah, he was front and centre in, in the midst of all this mm. back in the 90s. And I believe Jacques Chirac was uh, the last guy to, to, to blow up nukes That's right. in France. And that was, yeah, in the Man, 90s. I've got a feeling that that... Issue was the last true activism we saw in uh, in terms of the CT surfers all banding together and making a stand. I fully remember, like, you know, Taylor Knox and it was that era, you know, the Momentum era, all on tour. Uh, Hoyo was there. There was a bunch of that crew, all... Like, yeah, Curran and Morris Cole, I all remember. All with the fucking, you know, like placards and, and storming, you know, not just like saying it or posting it, like being together as a group... And really going hard at the protest. So, fuck, I mean, that, that might be the last time we saw that in terms of, like, actual active athletes at a contest getting fucking vocal mm. and banding together. Like, it just doesn't happen that much anymore, man. No, and, and that's the thing. Like, when these incidents happen on some distant island far away and you're removed mm. from the personal stories and the lived-in gravitas yeah. of injustice, yeah. it's easy to just kind of fob it off and be like, yeah, well, there's fucking countless shit going on in the world that's fucked up. What do you mm. want me to do about it? But when you're there and you're meeting the people and you're seeing the fallout, yeah. you can't avoid being moved. And, you know, as a journalist myself who's spent fucking uh, like a good probably decade of my life uh, talking to people affected by the various mm. system failures and living with them and sitting in their little fucking yeah. thatched huts, uh, surrounded by crying mothers and, and insane poverty, you eventually get to a point where it becomes personal to you. Mm. It all becomes personal. Yeah. You, you can't forget those people that you met and the tears and it all affects you yeah. in a way that is different to when you're just consuming it through a telly or mm. a, an iPhone screen. Let's not forget the uh, fallout from this too in the form of the Greenpeace boat that was blown yeah. up in Auckland Harbour, I believe, yep. uh, to the tune of, 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 I believe, a couple of Greenpeace operatives dying. And yeah. that was by the French Secret Services, yeah. was it not? Uh, uh, waging a, a, an underground kind of terrorist Covert act fucking, yeah. on foreign soil, mm. killing innocent people. Yep. It's fucking insane. Mm. Where's the repatriation for Greenpeace, for the operatives that were killed? Instead, we have this... Olympics, uh, where they're just drilling shit into the reef, uh, you know, kind of banning locals mm. from, from being in the channel. Yeah, there's a bit of backsheesh going towards the Water Patrol and uh, a few other people, but I don't know, man. It, it kind of stunk a bit at the start, and yeah, we got caught up in the, mm. the, the shenanigans of the Olympics because, you know, sport is the opioid of the masses. Mm -hmm. It distracts from the war and poverty and famine that's going mm. on all around us, and it's nice to, uh, you know, look, I'll be real. I love sports. Sports saved my life. Mm. So, you know, fill me with that opioid. Give it to me. I'll fucking <laughs> drool and sink into my couch. But uh, once it's over, back on the bandwagon, I'm screaming, no nukes, Macron. Mm. No nukes, Chirac. Cough up. Yeah. Sort out these yeah. Polynesians. And let's sort not just uh, acknowledge, let's fucking repatriate, as you yes. said, mate. Let's get fucking, you know. Talk is cheap. Talk is cheap. Tell you what's not cheap, repatriations. That's no. why they never fucking do it. That's right, mate. Number one. Oh, number two. <laughs> Some more bad news. Well, it's a bit oh, of a no. dark ep to uh, offset the opioid Olympics. Mm. Uh, but this one's just awful. Uh, an, an Aussie surfer has died in the tellos. Uh, Jeremy Jezawan, a devoted father and tugboat driver from Geraldton, Western Australia, died on Thursday Surfed in the Tellos. Uh, Juan, 48, was surfing with his son and friends when he reportedly struck his head on a reef and was knocked unconscious. Uh, despite efforts to resuscitate him, he could not be revived. 
a lifelong surfer and father of, father of three. Mr. Wan is survived by his wife, Ricky, their sons, aged 17 and 16, and their 12-year-old daughter. Fuck me, Dad. Mm. In a statement, the family expressed their profound grief, describing Mr. Wan as a man who worked tirelessly to provide for his family. Jeremy made his parents proud and was always there for his sister. He'll be missed by all who are fortunate enough to know him. The statement read, This has been a deadly year mm. in Indonesia, uh, but also just in surfing at large. I can't remember a year where there's been mm. this many fatalities and a lot of them on the back of head injuries. I know, man. In shallow conditions uh, and near-death experiences too. Yeah. It's, it's just been a gnarly one and uh, we're really getting to a, a bit of a tipping point it's, in terms of understanding that you got to protect the lemon spread in, in almost any kinds mm. of conditions. No, I, I'm fully backing that, man. Like, uh, it, it stokes me out when I see helmets in the surf now. Like, hey, take the reef out of it. Like, take these sort of, like, tropical holidays where you don't really get access to, you know, immediate top-level uh, medical attention. And that, you know, like, fuck, it's a miracle if you get that even on any beach anywhere in the world because, you know, it's a mission to get from the water's edge to to, you know, the attention that you need in, in you know, a life-saving period of time. Um, but the the helmet situation is just, it's just got to be a consideration, particularly when you're in these far-flung places. But why not when you're just surfing day-to-day at home? Like, man, you know, like uh, the, the pass, for example, is like a local spot for you and I that we'll, we'll have a, a little paddle out at from time to time. It's fucking Deadly as fuck out there sometimes, man. Especially when it's drainy and boards are just fucking flinging, slinging and going everywhere. Uh, you can hit the sand out there that can fucking knock you out in a, in a heartbeat. Um, I know we were like kind of having a bit of a... Having a little bit of a fucking patriotic sort of flex on those Oakley helmets that had come out in the Olympics. But, you know, whether it's that one or, or the good old-fashioned gaff. Like, I just don't see any harm in fucking protecting yourself. Like, like, like how... F- important is fashion over function when it comes to fucking living a, a full life and you know feel so devastated for Jez's fam and um and fuck what a what it's just a tragedy man spewing for the people at Jero it's you know all these towns are fucking pretty core they're, they're small like everyone knows everyone and it'll be devastating for everyone so the only takeaway I've got mate is like as you said protect that head man mm. protect yeah. like like you you if if you wear a helmet you just immediately minimise the risk of something like this happening. It's just, it's, it's, an, it's actually fact. Like, it, it will play a part in saving you if something untoward goes down. An interesting, Coley Vast actually has been wearing a helmet since day dot, mm. regardless of conditions. Uh, yeah. So, one of the most talented and fearless <clears throat> surfers on planet Earth grew up in a helmet. Jamie O'Brien was the same. And, you know, someone like Kalar Grace who was knocked unconscious whilst wearing a helmet, mm. but the thing got blown off his head. Yeah. But the point was that, you know, he was knocked unconscious and people were on him within seconds yeah. and he still nearly died. Mm. So, like, the point being that if you get knocked out in the water, it doesn't matter how close people are to you. Your lungs can fill up with water. You've got, like, less than a minute, really, because mm. you, your mouth opens, yeah. you involuntarily just start inhaling water and mm. gets onto your lungs, and you, you can die after the fact, yeah, even fully. though you're brought back to life. Uh, Ross Williams actually shared a pretty psycho story on his Instagram. Mm. Uh, so this is what he had to say. Over the last five or six years, I've had a couple pretty serious concussions. Two of them were at my favorite surf spot, Haliva. Shout out to my boy Kawika for pulling me out of the water. I was out by myself. The waves were 10 to 12 feet. Pretty maxed out, Haliva. Good thing he was there as I was unconscious for a couple seconds. It's easy to underestimate a head injury. There's lots of serious side effects that can sneak up on you. So he's been tapping into this mm. cutting edge neuropathic helmet wearing. I think they're called EGGs. These mm. uh, kind of brain healing sonar wave emitting helmets. Mm. Uh, cause yeah, he, he suffered a couple bad ones. His daughter had a really bad one too. She's in the helmet. Mm. All this because they're not wearing helmets to begin with. Mm. Uh, so it can happen to the best, uh, in the most innocuous and also the most consequential of scenarios. Mm. Yep. Can gaff up crew. Number one. On a lighter note, Vaughn, Sally Gritz Gibbons. Yeah. Takes out the U.S. Open and 40 large USD, which 
fuck, I don't think that's about, uh, well, it's pretty much a housing deposit in Australian pesos, well mm. played. Uh, yeah, that's four finals day finishes from four events, which now means she's on top of the Challenger Series ratings and pretty much a lock wow. for the World Tour How good, in 2025. Eh? How good, Smithy. And on the back of, you know, the Olympics, stealing our attention, getting us all opioided up. Uh, the US Open goes off with an absolute whimper. No one even given one flying fuck about a single heat in it other than possibly a family of the surfers and maybe a couple of Sponos who were keeping an eye. Didn't even hear, didn't have a single soul say to me, fuck, you know, Eric Kunji's going good over there or, geez, Chippo's surfing well or uh, what about fucking Sal getting through a few heats? Like nothing. Not a word, mate. And the Changers, as we've said, is in fucking dire condition right now. The waves were, let's put it honestly, Smithy, dog shit, mate. So bad. A dog shit. A, a piece of absolute caca falling out of a Labrador's ass. You know Labrador's? That's the worst kind of dog shit. Like, I don't care what dog you have, mate. Yeah, Labrador's, it's, it's like... It's fucked up because they're fucking mad mud guts. They eat anything. That's what I mean. They'll, so they'll eat anything. Off. And they also get given all these treats by their owners because they've, you know, they've got that lo- lovable heads. Yes, I will admit, but... If you tread in a Labrador shit, you know, you know that you're going to have a fuck day. And that is exactly what we were dished up at the US Open. Yes, it is a spectacle. And I'm, yes, I'm sure if you're there, you have a hell time. God knows I've had some fucking good times at the US Open over the years. But have I watched a single heat play out when the surf is that dog shit? Not one. And uh, I didn't see a single heat of this one, to be fair. Normally, fuck, I'm so in and about the Chang, especially now we've got Fucking two events left, dude. Two left. Portugal and Brazil. Um, my only positive takeaway from that whole thing is uh, I've got three, actually. Got one. Grits Gibbons getting it done. Uh, what a fucking woman. What a hero. Just when you what think about she's done, tears? she's straight 13, back. 13 years after she won her first US Open, there she is on the dice. You would have thought after, you know, watching her, uh, you know, her great rivals, Carissa and Steph, Hang up the rasher. You would have thought Sal might have been in the slipstream there. But no, Grits Gibbons puts it back on, serves up a plate of how the fuck do you like that to Bella Kenworthy, the great prodigy on her way to qualification. Oh, wonderful stuff from uh, Gritsy, Fitzy Gritsy, and, uh, yep, stoked. The other good news, uh, and it's it's mildly good, but uh, I think uh, Georgie Patar maybe climbed one spot on the rankings. Dakota Walters had a little a little leap up the rankings, and our boy Morgie, he's he's on a slow burn, but he's he's come up a few more spots. A lot of work to do. A Mate. lot of fucking work to do yeah. for these crew in these oh, last 100%. two events. I tell you who went large, Javi Earl, the world oh, Javi champ. Earl. Sorry, that's the other one. Yeah, up thirty-seven big spots with a semi-final finish. Uh, and his skill set is perfectly suited to the next, to the two, next two events. Two ways, I mean, Portugal, yeah, like he can get it done backside uh, on a mushy point break. But Brazil, far out. Mm. He's, he's going there to a, a beach break. Those beach break wizards, your codes, your Javi Earls. Uh, well placed. Well placed, primed for a late stab at the top 10. Uh, Jarvis, 37th. Uh, sorry, 17th. Chippo, 16th. Uh, Dakota, 14th. Mm. Jordy Lawler, 11th. And then in the cut, in the cut, oh, sorry, in the qualification zone, Mike McDonough at 8th. Mick McDonough, sorry. Yep. And Mick, uh, Mick. George Pitar at 3rd. Hey, mate, look, let's, let's just cast our critical eye over this uh, cone spiracy of, you know, judges just doing their best to fucking end the Brazilian storm. Mate, Six of the no, five of the top six on the Challenger Series rankings right now with two events to go are Brazilian. There's one fucking Aussie there. That's Georgie Pitar. And man, like, where is the evidence of this great, you know, uh, movement to oust Brazilian surfing from the top of the tree? It don't exist, brah. Mm, I'll tell you, that is an uninspiring lineup of surfers if I've ever seen one. Uh, Miggy Pupo, Michael Rodriguez, Alejo Muniz. Sammy Pupo's, you know, got some electric hi-fi S-turns and uh, aerials in him and, and Ian Gavea, but, oh, God damn. Mate, like, Aleo, Michael Rodriguez and Miguel dude, Pupo, that's, no thanks. That, I don't need to see you guys on the World Tour again. All six, all six other than Georgie Patar, are former CT grinders, mate. They're yeah. all QE grinders. They've yeah. all been there before and they've all been cut. So what is going on on the Chang? Busted, broken, needs fixing, 
it's it's not what you want to see at this stage of this rank rankings. And shout out, and I'd be saying that if it was like you know fucking Toby Martin and. Uh, who were the other grinders? Dayan Neve. Dayan Neve and everyone else who was fucking, you know, lurking around that 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 zone. Like, it's time to move on. Let's get into some fucking waves of truth, first and foremost, and start rewarding the surfers who can fucking deliver. Big shout out and doff to Al Cleland Jr., who we clearly know is one of those surfers. 10,000 points. He must have skipped up the rankings a fair bit. Oh, man. 42 spots. He went up into ninth. He is now within a... Yeah, he's in the qualification zone. Mm. And what a performance. Going from maxing yeah. chokes where he put on one of the great heats of all time against Joanne Daru. Yeah. Uh, cashing in at major numbers. Great heat. With some psycho West Bowls. And then jumps on a flight straight to the US Hope and, uh, and competes in one to two foot gibberish. Gets the win. Mexico's first ever win in the event. Mm. And, mate, he's a rugged character from a rough cartel-ravaged part of mm. Mexico too. So uh, I, I think he's, he, his dad's American. You know, he's, he's got uh, American uh, ethnicity, mm. but he's born and bred Mexico mm. in a rough part of town. So he's got plenty of grit in him. No. What no a surfer out. he is. Holy shit. I watched a clip of him and Victor Bernardo. Uh, it's some piping Central American A-frame. And the cunt is getting coned on six-foot yeah. waves, switch foot. Yeah. It's wild. Like yeah. like proper knives behind the dagger. I oh, know. He's getting blown out. He's got the moxie, mate. Holy shit. He's shrubs. got the moxie. Uh, he's a popular character too, I think, on tour. Uh, from what I can gather, everyone loves him and... Yeah, I mean, just check out those uh, last two Wade Carroll Quicksilver offerings. Oh, yeah. And uh, yeah, and you'll scope some ACJ right up in your grill. Yeah, he comes of age in that repeater film for Beans, sure. Mate. Beans. Oh, sorry. And just quickly. Oh, yeah. John John Florence doing a couple of laps of Lowers Trestles on that recent hurricane swell Woo! and looking sharp. Here we go. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, getting a few reps in before it all kicks off now that he's a lock. Uh, yeah, interesting, you know, ha- has a won a world title since 2017, uh, and he's never been in contention for title since this WCL Final mad? 5 scenario. So, yeah, smart ploy, getting a few reps in, but it's going to be the pressure mm. of that format. It's brought the best undone. It has. So, we're going to see. It's going to be fascinating to watch that go down mm, and I see how wait. he deals with it all. Uh, but I'll tell you what, Smitty, this uh, cloud break comp that's coming up. Ooh, we're going to deep dive it, bro. We're going to have to. Uh, well, it must start soon, actually, because it finishes on the 30th. So we must be coming right in on the waiting period. Perhaps uh, perhaps you and I are going to have to do a, a quick turnaround app and, and get stuck into it because this is the comp of the year by far. Like, I mean, nothing is uh, – there, there is no event with more at stake. Now that the Olympics are out of the way, this is all about the final five and we will start ramping, my friend. Under or over. Well, and Aussie surf coaches are the nation's greatest Traders. export. Oh, exports. Okay, yeah. Since iron ore. Mm, aren't they? Yeah. We're everywhere. We're basically, we are to professional surfing what South Americans are to soccer and what Polynesians are to rugby league and mm. rugby union. Mm. Do you even have a national surf team if you don't have an Australian surf coach no, in the midst? No. Uh, just a, a, quick, the best. a quick run through who was in the mix. Yeah. Japan. Snake Patterson and Dog Marsh. Traders! Describe! <laughs> uh, USA, Mitch Ross, Tommy Witz, Luke Egan. Three of them? What do you need three for? <laughs> Plus a Hawaiian. Get your own coach. Yeah. Brett Simpson, what's he doing? Mm. Get him off the couch. Get him off the... the get, get, he's a couch spud there at Huntington. Well, wasn't he the last US coach? They brought home a gold medal. Yeah. What was the go? Get some homegrown talent. Hmm. Uh, China, Pete Johnson. I'm pretty sure he's Australian, isn't he? What? Uh, Australia, yeah. Obviously, we had three. You'd, you know, you'd hope yeah. so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I mean, Micro, you know, Bidet, but, and, and Matty Benny. Yeah, can we please doff the Akubra to the three Australian coaches for keeping it local and, uh, you know, knowing, knowing where the Vegemite goes on the toast, bruh? Yeah. Even Canada. Shannon Brown. Poaching. Some Aussie what? talent. Disgrace. Mm. So, uh, yeah, I just... Wait, what about Luke Egan? Did you give oh, him yeah. A oh, yeah. He was uh, Judas! Team USA. Judas. Stabbed us in the back. Oh, yeah, unbelievable. Unbelievable. Uh, congrats to Louis, though. Oh, I know yeah, we well, gave him a shout out. Yeah, but well played. Good to see an you know, Australian bring home a little bit of gold. It was nice. And a, a, bit, a bit of goss via Stab Magazine from Snake uh, about how it all went down, why there were so mm. many Australians, Australian turncoats in the mix. Yeah. 
haven't seen that many Australian turncoats since. I don't know. <laughs> it's unprecedented. Yeah, it's unseen, mate. We're generally a loyal bunch. Mm. Uh, but this is what he had to say. Kanoa's had a lot to do with the whole Japanese association, so he just kind of insisted on bringing me. Then Connie goes, this is kind of all oh, really son. Mm. Uh, well, I want dog there too. Next thing, we rock up here and we're being given this Japan- Japanese kit and taken to our team house. They've got a Japanese chef cooking up the most incredible food. It's so nice because you're not thinking, what are we going to do for breakfast or where are we going to go for dinner? It's so well organized that all we need to focus on is being coaches. They really leave no stone unturned. Oh, well, that's what it's all about. He's jumped shit because he's sick of dog's eyes and Vegemite yeah. on toast for a bit of sashimi. Yeah. Some, uh, I don't know, like some urchin sushi. Oh, no, yeah. You, you, some you know ramen. The, the, the Australian the buffets off waking, the charts. waking up every morning, walking down into the kitchen and going, oh, what's for breakfast? And they're going, oh, I don't know, wheat picks? Yeah, you Help want yourself, you know, Fucking make an omelette. Yeah, what, make, what, 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 what cook your is? own eggs, you fucking idiot. Fuck cook your own you. fucking food. I'm not cooking your food, can't fuck off. <laughs> that's how the Australians get treated. That's yeah. your Kunzi fucking grit merchants. That's why I've got so much gritness. That's right. Yeah. Yeah, we didn't see Japan meddling because yeah, they're no, just. We see Jake bull- go down and say, "Oh, Mister uh, Patterson, son, no, would you like your your uh, your urchin uh, sashimi uh, like wrapped in seaweed, or would you like it in a little rice paper roll, or how would you like it?" And it's like, oh, I don't know. They might get a massage first and then come back mm. get some uh, yeah, what's that fucking needle. The needle, what's the fucking needle massage yeah, called? Yeah, so some acupuncture. There's a bit of acupuncture in the run, yeah, yeah. one room, some shiatsu in the next, a, yeah. Bacardi, a Bacaki party <laughs> in the room after that. Take your pick. How uh, do you want to unwind before your heat starts? Yeah, no, and you're not even surfing in it. No, nah, no, nah, they've, they've fallen in love with the comfort, mate. They've fallen oh, in love with the comfort. Yes, have they what? Hey. And uh, look where it gets you. No medal for you. No medal. Nothing. Nah. What? Just destroyed yeah. right. by Aussie and Brazilian grit merchants. You can't imagine that the Japanese association, who took two medals out of the Tokyo Olympics, don't forget, two, silver with a Kanoa and a, a bronze with a... Uh, Suzuki, was it? Uh, yes, yes, Amura Suzuki. Uh, this campaign, two Aussies in camp, getting their massages, getting their sashimi. No medals for you! Oh, mate. <laughs> You can guarantee there's going to be yeah. an investigation. They leave no stone unturned yeah. in delivering you the freshest seafood French Polynesia can yeah. provide. But you better believe when you don't produce medals, the knives come out That's in the land of the rising sun. Well, and say, they are famously xenophobic. Did, so did, get the fuck out of the Australians. They, they got back to their hotel rooms and there was just a knife just sitting on the bed. Oh, you know, yeah. The hurry curry. Just like, you know that You chef. guys deal with that. You guys deal with that. Yeah, you know the chef who was previously using that knife to <laughs> chop up the sushi was just sharpening the blade, yeah. and snaking. Just uh, boys, uh, these will be ready for you in just a moment. We'll bring them up. Yeah, yeah, you know it. Oh, mate. Hey, listen. On a, a slightly more serious note, I I uh, I went back after one of our Olympic eps and, and had a listen uh, watch of the Ethan Hewing, Connor O'Leary heat. I think I was harsh on Connor O'Leary, mate. Oh, really? I was a little bit harsh on him. He fucking went nuts. That was one of the heats of the whole comp. And I feel like I was just a bit harsh. But I was up and about, Smithy. I wanted to see both those guys, you know, put on their show. And I was devo for Conor O'Leary. And I just took it a bit too far. I feel a bit bad, mate. But, you know, just oh. felt like I wanted to clear the air there. That's felt unlike bad. you, Vaughan. It's yeah. unlike you. Uh, repenting for I'm some repenting. harsh commentary. Oh, I just I felt like I was going, well, maybe I got that wrong. Because uh, I went back and I was definitely fucked up. It was a fucked up heat. Dude, I'll say this. It Watching was, it, it was live. Like grit. Fest. Oh, it was disgusting. It was yeah. the heaviest, most. I was begging for him to call it off. Yeah. No, don't do it. These are two of our favourite sides. Mm. You can't do this to him. Nah. Fernando Aguero, you get out there. Yeah. Like, uh, who was it? Hemmings that yeah. was packing him at YMA right. when it was a That's thousand right. foot. Go on, show us how it's done, yeah, you Aguero. Show us how it's done. And then yeah. we'll send our best to uh, meet their maker at the fucking onshore Fuck, 10 for West Bowl. It, it, was, Yuck. Uh, it was a heroic performance. I from couldn't Rose believe they got barreled out there. I yeah. couldn't believe they found exits. I couldn't believe they had the moxie to commit and knife it under the ledge. And just not knowing over and over oh. and over into the trench, the whole trench and nothing but it the trench. So wild. help me God. It, it, was was a, it, was a, yeah, it was a doff for both surfers and I just want to make that known. Uh, and interestingly too, Snake had this to say, uh, about the forecast, because mm. uh, we all got absolutely Stitched. hoodwinked by it. He yeah. said, Surfline has got everything so wrong. Dude, we rocked up that big day with short boards on dark. Then the mooring you normally put the boat on was getting hit by white water. We went, what the fuck is going on here? Mm. It's like 8 to 12 feet. Yeah. 
It was crazy. No yeah. one saw that coming. It was except so- Parco. Mm. Parco called it. He yeah, said, Parco knows. Remember, Parco, mate. If anyone knows. <laughs> Parko's nose and uh, he can sniff it out. He mate. said, he, "He goes, mate. He, he stuck that thing in the breeze and he just went. He put his nose foot, fourteen seconds west angled. It's on. That's right. He, he stuck his nose so far out there he could smell the fucking toxic waste cloud that was fucking seeping over the top of Chopu oh, as yeah. that swell hit. Radioactive reading at twelve point five. That's right. Hectopascals. Get out of there. Get out of Dodge. So he uh, he did say uh, word for word. He goes, mate, on this angle, anything could happen." Anything, he goes, there could be a day that it's fucking proper and on that West Bowl. Like, and he said, I expect rights at some point. It's going to be that West. I was going, fuck, that's, that's crazy. That was days out from the fucking surf line forecast, dude. I'll say this about that day, that round three mm. day. Go on. The cleanest entries into the biggest, most perfect slabs ever seen, but... The majesty and the magic of it was the angle of the swell. Mm. Anything less west than that, and chopes can become a bit repetitive. Yep. Uh, it, it, they're so good now, the elite, yeah. that they make it look easy. It's yep. become a cakewalk somehow. Mm. But on that west angle, it looked like a different wave. It did. It was crazy, and it was cornering so hard on the reef. It was basically a closeout. It let you out for this split second where any mere mortal would just be getting absolutely yep. impaled, just corned on the spikes. Mm. But the world's best able to get blown out, yeah. kick out with a nonchalance, dare mm. I say it, yeah. dare I muddy the Polynesian no, no, waters no, no, with no. French garbage <laughs> yet again. But I will. It was no. nonchalant. It's a, it, was a, it was a remarkable day, and that's what I will hang Olympic surfing on forever and ever, regardless pinnacle. of the yeah, – it was the pinnacle. It, it was. was the pinnacle. It was the rocky pinnacle, an incredible event, uh, the first few rounds, as good as it gets, yeah. and then tape it off into that fucking – Long period lully snooze fest that mm. I thought it was going to be from the start. Yeah. So we got lucky. We got lucky. Uh, Australian coaches. Fucking under. Feeding the rest of the Massive world. Massive under. Huge under. Disgrace. I mean, can you imagine the amount of yeah. medals that would not have been won by foreign nationals mm. had we been there? Mate. Well, Dominating thank, with an all-Australian army. Eh? Thank God, eh? Thank God Kinsey wasn't there. Oh, thank God Kinsey, Kinsey wasn't there putting the grit back into the uh, Medina campaign. Pretty oh. hectic. Anyway. Um. Yeah. Born more awful news. This one's a fucking oh, no. doozy. Oh, Kai McKenzie, core lord par excellence, shred lord. Fucking rips on the skater, rips on the stick. Yeah. Uh, and just got done by a fucking monolithic megalodon fucking at Port Mac. There, huge, Terrifying. great white shark. Uh, I watched the footage like you did, and <sighs> it's fucking harrowing, mm. dude. The way he's sprint paddling away from this thing, and it's just thrashing, chomping bit by bit behind him. Uh, he's got his legs up. He does everything right, mm. uh, but the thing gets him, and clean sever of the leg, mm. uh, which washed up on shore not long after. He was miraculously saved, kept his sense of humour throughout the whole Boy. ordeal. What a fucking madman he is. Yeah. What an inspiration he is. Never lost that pikey convict no. black humour. Mm. Did us all so proud uh, with the way he, he's taken this. And I don't want to say that this is like a bad moment or heap pity uh, or victimhood on him because this could well be the making of him and he, he, he could rise mm. from this like the Phoenix... From the ashes, like we've seen Bethany Hamilton do. Mm. Uh, in fact, it's almost a guarantee, uh, given the mental fortitude of the kid, yeah. uh, that he's going to come out of this stronger, fitter and healthier mm. and, and just set the standard for grit. Fuck, dude. Oh, uh, man, it, w- it was awful scenes. Uh, he's been remarkable. He's been fucking... Like, it's almost like he's making everyone else feel okay. You know? like That's that's the attitude he's brought to it. I mean, a lot of... A lot of his posts, a lot of the sense of humour you're talking about, it's like, fuck yeah, it gets you up, you know. Um, but my instant reaction, Smivy, when I heard this and I like seeing it was fucking the worst. I, I can't even, I just can't even imagine what that moment must be like in real life. But I just instantly thought about, uh, well, after immediately thinking about Kai and his um, family, just like the Port Macquarie community for Tobes, who mm. got, you know, his foot done mm. uh, months ago. Just fucking, it's just heavy, man. Like, to, to go through that twice in the space of a year is like, it's so radical because it's affecting like the whole, oh man, like the, the what would you call it? Like just the, the attitude, not the attitude, the 
fucking feel around the town. I don't know. It's fucking terrifying. I'm so, I'm just so rattled. You know, uh, I, I don't, I live like not too far from there. Um, same little stretch of coast when I'm down the coast. And um, it's just, it's just heavy. It just leaves you with this feeling of, of really like, I don't know, I guess in one way it is the natural world. We're out there, we're part of it. But in another way, it doesn't feel good to be paddling out and feeling unsafe. Like it's fucking not a good feeling. No, nah, I was just having a look at whether they've got drum lines. They do. They've got mm. one at uh, Lighthouse Beach. This happened at North Beach. Is that on the north side of the river mouth? I think so, yeah. <laughs> and, oh man, it's a wild concept, isn't it? Mm. Uh, the, the specter of shark attacks and it's so real where mm. we live. Although in this Lennox Ballina region, I mean, we've got more drum lines up here than anywhere else in the state. Uh, Lennox has two. There's, there's one at Seven Mile. There's one at the Point. Yep. Uh, and then Ballina has two. One at Sharps. One at Lighthouse. Uh, in fact, there's more than that. There's one at South Wall. There's one at Lighthouse. Mm. There's. It's the one at Light. There's one at Speeds. There's way more than that. Yeah. So they're saying there's only. So this website's fucking shark smart. It's mm. Way out of date. But we haven't had a shark attack here, mm. uh, a fatality since that wretched run that Paul yeah. Max pretty much going yeah. through now. And they put drum lines in on the back of that, basically fucking stop them dead. Mm. But more broadly, I'm thinking that at this stage of my life and, and given, you know, two fucking proper call lords getting done in a, mm. a short amount of time from the mid north coast that I'm going to have a real good hard look at my patterns mm. with surfing I'm probably going to download that dorsal app again mm. and just surf less surf when the waves are worth dying for mm. and, and not much less than that mm. uh, and, and, and keep an eye on the data and, and just use everything at my disposal to predict patterns and try to avoid and, and mitigate this risk Fuck, mate i mean the heaviest thing is like it's a day you're, you're going surfing that day it's a it's a crystal clean early like you know mid-morning is it like i don't know the exact time but it, you know it looks like just one of those dreamy sessions that you go for in any sort of like part of your day where you go fuck yeah i've got a window i'm just gonna go snap it and Brett Birchard explained to us he had a psycho oh, run in. I've seen that one too. Fuck. That's brutal. Uh, yeah. And, you know, with, with an eight-month child, uh, eight-month-old child, mm. newborn, like such as the circumstances are insane. Yeah. But uh, he explained to us on the pod that in his deep dive on, on, on shark behavior, great whites are a, a midday, mid-morning feeder. Mm. Like that's the window for him. Oh, yeah. And it does seem to be that that it is a, a pattern that repeats a lot. So, yeah. fuck the early... And the late back on the cards. Yeah, big time. Oh, man. So um, sad. And Kai, I, I believe he had a, a rough run, uh, like uh, some broken back or something. Mm. Knocked his teeth out skating. So, like a, a really hectic run of injuries. Yeah. But the resilience of the Fuck, kid, he's, mate. He's How strong, is strong, mate. Wow. Fucking strong. Shout out to Kai. Shout out to Tobes. Shout out to Port Macquarie and the, the mid-north coast. And fucking let's just see this fucking run of bad, bad shit come to an end, man. Mm. Massive under. Massive under. Vaughan, seawall construction is underway surrounding the cracking cliffs at Uluwatu. This is a, a wild story. Uh, so this is via Ben Mondi on Surfer Magazine. Mm. Disturbing new computer-generated footage has emerged of the Balinese government's plan to build a concrete seawall around the base of Uluwatu cliffs. The measures have been implemented to protect the Pura Lahore Uluwatu Temple. The threat of the Uluwatu Temple first arose in 1992 when a significant crack was discovered in the cliff after a major earthquake. However, in the intervening years, the Balinese government's only response was to limit visitor numbers. The iconic Hindu temple has been perched at the cliff's edge for centuries, but as more cracks in the cliffside appear below, the government was forced to act. No mention or we assume an assessment was made of the effects the seawall may have on marine life. The inshore reef environment is known as a dugong and shark nursery. Shark nursery? Mm. Fucking, I haven't seen one of them in a while. Mm. But, Not over uh, there, no. Uh, shark uh, farm, maybe, for the Indo fishermen. But mm. anyway. I'm yeah, exactly. Guess. That's what I was going to say. Yeah. Uh, uh, among many sea. other natural worlds, the seawall could also affect the waves at Ulus, given the backwash typically associated with those styles of coastal constructions mm. many are alarmed at the scale and nature of the seawall as shown in the video uh, which you can find on instagram 
on uh, chungu.info. Uh, Kelly Slater was one of the first to weigh in, of course. Oh. The goat doesn't miss a beat. He does not miss a beat. Uh, shit show. Get to ruin all of it. Get the government to work on things that actually help their people. This would surely cause more damage than it would ever fix, commented the goat. Mm. And yeah, it does kind of reek of a bit of buck. Sheesh, mm. if you ask me, rinsed corn. Uh, we know how hungry these kind of governments are to do these roadworking initiatives and mm. you know, pump a bunch of funds into the uh, back pockets mm. of the various contractors and workers and, and whatnot. I mean, we yeah. see this in Australia all the time, just mm. superfluous roadworks shutting down yeah. roads that we used to get to surf all the time. And, you know, being a surf, you're always skeptical when you're blocked from accessing waves. Like, what mm-hmm. the fuck's going on here? Yeah. You get out, you have a look. There's just a bunch of fat cunts with beards punching durries doing nothing. Yeah. Meanwhile, you can't get to the waves because it's being blocked and it's yeah. offshore. And yeah, yeah. You know, we know the drill. Yeah. And they know the drill over there. Who gives mm. a fuck about the temple? Let the cunt topple into the sea. Fuck, mate. I just love that, uh, you know, how do we fix this uh, problem of, uh, you know, too many people overbuilding, the fucking digging into the cliffs already. You know, we've seen that. They're, they're, they're eating away at the cliff uh, just to build more resorts. What can we do to salvage this problem? I don't know. Let's build some shit. Yeah, build some more. Let's build some more shit. That's exactly uh, what's going to fix this I don't this fucking understand. <laughs> Oh, mate, yeah. It, it reminds me of digging your way out of a hole. Like, it just just keep going down, down, down. Next thing you know, the water level, some po- at some point you're going to hit water and then you'll end up drowning and that's probably the best you can hope for, Smithy, because, yeah, it, it doesn't seem like there's a whole lot of science going into these madcap uh, Band-Aid solutions, does it? Nah. Oh, there's a crack in the cliff. Let's just fill it full of cement. Or what about we fucking um, put a dolphin pool down at the bottom of the cliff Two birds with one stone. We can put the dugongs in a big cement enclosure and then we save, save the cliff from toppling in, which probably, honestly, like what wall can you build at Ulu's that's going to have the fucking foundation strength to keep a cliff from toppling over? I mean, Surely it's not, not even doable. Let's be real. Like Indonesia is situated on the juncture of multiple fault lines. Yeah. It is the most tectonically volatile place mm. on planet Earth. Yeah. Cracks in Indonesian cliffs are as common as Mentos packets in offering boxes. <laughs> They're fucking everywhere. <laughs> Who cares? <laughs> Just it's toss true. another couple of roops in the offering box. Fuck, mate. I'll tell you, this is a big under, Smitty. It's another Mercy big under. under. Fuck, we haven't had an over yet. No. Have we got one? Surely we got an over. Inside the Chinese Surf Academy, Vaughan. Oh. <laughs> we wondered. Is there an over? Could be. Is there an over coming here? Uh, this came That's again from Stab Magazine, the yeah. bastions of investigative gold cone piece award-winning surf journalist, where Smithy cut his teeth That's and right. polished his first cone piece off. Love it. Uh, this is what they had to say about what it looked like inside the Chinese Surf Academy. Surf Academy. Vaughan. Is it a building or is it a like a, a factory? What is it? Uh, yeah, it's a bit of both. Uh, a multi-story building with a giant CCP banner on top of it and a hammer and sickle yeah. uh, and a bunch of, uh, let's say, IVF uh, Petri dishes just mm. cooking up That's what I the thought. next talent. Yep. Yep, just a, a big squirting gun, just, you know, turkey basting mm. into a Petri yeah. dish on this factory line. little print of Je- uh, Chairman Mao on the bottom of the Petri dish. Oh, yeah. So they're just brought up, completely indoctrinated, ready to serve. Yep. Yep. Uh, and you don't want to see the, the, the farm of surrogate mothers there. Mm. Uh, it's, very it's just like the uh, Mad Max Fury Road scene, isn't it? Exactly. Just breast milk coming out uh, oh, yeah. left, right and centre. Triple-breasted, yeah, uh, bloated mm. uh, females, I, I guess is what you'd call them, but yeah. they're just pumping out the oves. Holy oh, shit. Yeah. Little nuggets of gold medal winning gold. Here we go. Uh, coming out the uteruses of those hard-working Chinese women, well played to the mm. lot of them. But uh, this is also what it looked like. This is a, I don't know who paid the price, the ultimate price to get this insight. Get this info. All right. But uh, someone has. It's on stab, must be true. Yeah. Uh, hordes of teenagers stand in ovation as a party official enters a public hall. He takes his seat at the podium and addresses the young crowd. After 5,000 years of China's glorious history, we stand here the closest ever to becoming the world's strongest nation. Getting the gold medal will win glory for China. It will prove to the world that the Chinese people are the greatest Mm -hmm. in the world. 
Mr. Lee, Secretary of the Chinese Water Sports Administration, zeroes in on the teenage imagination with his rousing speech. Once you've accomplished your goal, imagine how great your self-worth will be. How many of your peers will envy you, admire you, revere you? You'd be a valuable member of society. The only way to reflect your worth is by winning the championship and getting first place. He doesn't mince words, does he? Secretary Lee. Uh, the only way to prove your self-worth is by a shiny capitalist trinket mm. dangling around your neck. Uh, you'd be a valuable member of society, suggesting that uh, prior to winning a medal, you're nothing but a worthless member of the proletariat, <laughs> digging holes and mixing up noodles uh, for Communist Party executives. Mm. So, yeah. Well, what do we read into Fucking this? Hell, it's, uh, uh, it's a fairly regimented little uh, scene that is being painted here, Smithy. There's a bit more too. Mr. Ma, director of the Chinese national surf team, put it bluntly. Whether you are on the national team or the Olympic team, it's not permanent. You're all here by recommendation. But if you slip, you're out. Mm. If you're late or you leave early or disobey, the coach can smack your bum with a stick. Is the stick bamboo? Can we confirm? Can't confirm, uh, mm. but I don't know if that is a punishment or a reward. Mm. Depends well, uh, which side of into. the sadomasochistic spectrum you fall on. But uh, I know there's more than a couple in the Bondi Board Riders fraternity, but that, that wouldn't be uh, considering that a punishment. Right, they'd, so be, uh, they'd be you know, coughing up priority at will just for so, uh, a, a sweet taste of that sweet bamboo on their buttocks. Can we confirm that uh, little Paddy Zoo or, or Sing Yang Simi Yang had uh, like uh, welts across the back of their legs as they were walking down for their heats. Well, I did have a couple of cameras hidden in the Tahitian drop toilet. Mm. Can confirm. Welts galore. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> Can confirm that camera is a hot mess too. I'll bet. Oh, they didn't make GoPros nah. to withstand the uh, serum that the Chinese that's surf it, team man. were on. Fucking well, burnt yep. straight through the lens. Not to mention the, Melted uh, the yellow cake. cake uranium that's seeping through the pores oh, yeah. into the uh, stool sample. Uh, everyone over there mixing Poisson crew with yellow cr- cake uranium, mm. uh, radioactive poisoning. It's not a good scene over there in the drop drop toilets at all, Smithy. Nah, I mean, we know how powerful Jack Robinson's stream oh, was yeah. after those eight-hour sessions mm. at Tombstones yeah. prior to going to Tahiti. Now uh, you can add a bit of radioactive uh, gumption Lava. to it. Oh, yeah, burn straight through the, uh, the, the ceramic, the porcelain, the steel even. Uh, turning fucking u- uh, urinal cakes to gas. Mm. Well, thank yeah. God we're going to Fiji after Tahiti, oh, yeah. where there's been no, uh, no, no. N- nothing untowards going on over there with Although, the, the Chinese or anything like that. No, no, wait a minute, not. didn't Navarin Fox and I think he lost uh, his block? Didn't did, he? Didn't Navarin Fox and Laurie Tanner lose a big block of land to a Chinese developer? Ah, it never ends, Smithy. Never ends. Oh, we didn't think we were affecting anyone by carving a huge channel through the reef here. Mm. Mm. Well. We'll see uh, what side of the punishment spectrum, the sadomasochistic spectrum, old Foxy and, and Town around right. up on. Uh, let's hope we don't see him mm. turning up as the next Chinese surf coach. Conspiracy, you heard it here first. Bit of bakshish coming the way. Oh, yeah, no. the finest massive wonder. Wow, what a dismal episode that was, Vaughn. Just wow. nothing but doom and gloom. Doom but and gloom. Look, it had to be that way. All things in balance. Yeah. We come out of the Olympic opioid special. There was a day after day of constant froth on yeah. the Olympic spectacle. And That's all right, mate. We've got rugby league uh, finals to uh, to bliss us <laughs> out and opioid us out. We've got oh, yeah. cloud break and the WSL finals on the horizon. Plenty of sport to keep us in our stupor. I'm looking forward to it, mate. Smithy, Swillians time, bro. Swillians, Swilliettes, Swell Dogs, Swell Lords. Core Lord, Cone Fiends, yeah. King Cones. Fucking Shamans. The works. The fucking, the, the crew, our crew. Whoever has the cognitive wherewithal to get a couple of thumbs and bang furiously into their cracked iPhone 6 screen gets a crack on this program. Well played to a lot of you. Well played, Swillians. And, uh, yeah, many, many letters, great letters, great questions. The Swillians don't 
fuck around when it comes nah, to this. Nah, they don't mean squares. They get right up it. And they they're get all about up it. Unlike uh, Puck and Phil, they are, they are humans of truth. They are. They Deep pre- truth. They prefer waves of truth. They prefer surfers of truth. And they prefer journalists of truth. Yeah. Like a sarge. Yeah, they can... S- and <laughs> They can sniff out the fucking Puck Cheese crew. Oh, yeah. Fucking like those uh, drop pits in uh, Tahiti, mate. Yeah. Rank, rank, rank. Saucy. Always first on the uh, the thumb. A proud patron. On your saint gordo, yes. Well, fa- well, thanks for getting on, on board. On the first to jump on and Wasn't he? flip us a queen head. One of the, the pearl tr- necklace. One of the true surf fanatics, too. Oh, like, fuck, I know cool. we harp what on about What about the man cave? The man cave is a the fucking VHS walk collection. back in time. Wow. I would love to a see. sacred labyrinth, a sacred... Uh, he's going to go down as yeah. like kind of uh, an Egyptian tomb oh, of big surf time. memorabilia. Yeah, yeah, it's a Tutankhamen vibe in there. It's a it's a Ramses vibe mm. of surf memorabilia and and gold. A couple uh, of uh, couple of skin flicks in there too. And a <laughs> you bit know of, there is a bit of musk, you know there bit is. of a mu- musky uh, yep. a musky stench that's not just sex wax. I'll yeah, tell you a couple of those old headworks pay ads though. They don't open like they used to. Put it that way, Smithy. <laughs> I'd love to see. Uh, I'd love to see. Gordo, I don't know if he's done it. Walk into like Mick Mock's Little Dragon, the old, because the, that, that's another sort of. He's the uh, the Gordo of the Northern Beaches. Mick Mock, great collector, and uh, he has some <laughs> wonderful stuff. And, and Al Hunt, one of the all time collections, mm. mate. Gordo, give Al Hunt a call. Drop him a line. I don't know if he's got social media. His garage is fucked up, dude. Mate, unite the clans. Unite the we call need lords. To. We need a meeting of elders. Yeah, Don the road. This is like the future, Smithy. We could be living in a. Like, look, if we get these three people together, the the collect the collections they've got are a thing of you know we're starting to head into like stone masonry, oh, yeah. you know secret society kind of uh, museums. It's of, the Da Vinci Code part. Oh too. yeah, it's fucking messed up. Wonderful shit in there. Everything from herring banana boards to oh. Coke Classic t shirts signed by True the entire relics. forty four from wow. nineteen ninety two. Shit like that, mate. It's mad. Anyway, Saucy wants to know, uh, what are the origins of everyone saying, let's go? In, yeah, I've had uh, a inverted fucking comment. gutful that silly, yeah. silly catchphrase. And what you say, where, are, where is this desired destination that we're going to? It's uh, true. And can we stop saying it, please? <coughs> kind Agreed. regards, Saucy. A uh, few people have, have chipped in. Uh, free Sean Man has said... Well, the Volk, he says it as much as he wants. So, uh, I don't know if Alexander... Yeah, I mean, uh, I'm not gonna, we're not going to fuck it. Nah, we're, we're not, not going to we're, we're not going there. We're not going there. Very true. Uh, yeah, let's go, says the North. He says, uh, I'm open to any other suggestions. This is saucy. Uh, the US water polo Flavor Flav endorsed uh, team. You saw that, Flavor Flav from uh, Public Enemy. Sponsored the US water polo team because they didn't have sponos. Wow. Mad dog. Let's what? see a bit of that going on over here in Australia. Was Flavor Flav being asked to cough up? No, I don't know. I think he's just somehow got into it through friends or his kids or something like that. So he's a full blown water polo he just aficionado. Backed the water. Yeah, like why can't we have uh, Patreons of some of our Olympic sports that don't get a look in? Mm. Like surfing could surely get a little leg up from Saint Mick of Penrith. There you go, Saint Mick. No one better. Uh, but yeah, so uh, Flavor Flav had a yeah, boy. Is what his, uh, time the, is it? Yeah, and then, um, time for gold. But Saucy and rightfully says uh, the Australians, the Eerie Country, should have ripped their fucking heads off. Rip yeah. their fucking heads off. Let's fucking rip their fucking heads off. That's that is the ult- the ultimate saying, isn't it? Totally. I mean, like, let's go is just so ubiquitous. It, it lacks any real cultural zing mm. or sting to it. Yeah. Uh, I'd prefer. Any of the above fucking oath. Yeah. Let's go, cunt. Yeah, cunt. Take his fucking head off. Ah, oh, well done. Yeah, yeah. something like that. Yeah. Mm. I think that uh, it needs to be brought up uh, with the Irukandji management in mm. the post-Olympic, you know, overview of our performance and how we went. That there just wasn't enough stinging going on. No, there, there wasn't, wasn't enough jelly wobbling. I mean, we gave him a proper t- in the right there direction. There was the doff. Don't get me wrong. I was loving was the Robbo doff, but Robbo was doing that doff on his own. I didn't see Molly come out and doff. I didn't see Tyler come out and doff, and I didn't see anything come out and doff. So the power is in the collective. Well, in fairness, neither Molly nor Tyler really had a reason to doff. No, true. But uh, Ewing definitely had a couple. Yeah, Ewing should have doffed. I mean, I don't know what the North Stratty yeah. uh, folk dance is or 
classical claim or is it that much of a core zone that uh, it's really like they've taken the no claim yeah. claim to new degrees of subtlety and nuance where they are, uh, I don't know, there's just a, a slight little clenching yeah. of the sphincter and uh, they're all so tuned in like dolphins that the North Strati crew are just like... Oh yeah, Mate, now he, you're talking. He gave us he gave us a, a, a triple clench there. Yeah, they all felt it. We don't, we're not tapped in though. Are we? Uh, can we confirm or not that Sally Fitzgibbons brought? She, she did the bring this sting after the US Open. Surely she was in the Is circle right? of fire and, and was bringing sting. Mm. She never lets an opportunity to bring sting happen. Ever. Never Our misses. Nah, grits And giving. where is she? Top of the dice. Just That's keep it. that in your fucking back pocket. Remember, let's fucking uh, go, cunt. May I suggest? Yeah, okay. Let's go, cunt. <laughs> or uh, can I also throw in there a uh, clench the corn, doff the gaff. Let's go, cunt. My favourite yeah. uh, when we're up against the Bra Boys there in those classic derbies. Oh, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, In front of Hydro Hill at Pioneer <laughs> Park and... There was a bunch of cunts screaming at yeah. me. My favourite was, put a pair of boots on your dog. That was uh, a classic. I don't That's know how it one. really applies to Bad. surfing, but maybe put a gaff on your fucking dog. But then the yeah. dog's more likely to wear a gaff. Yeah. But no, that's politically incorrect. Well, everyone should be wearing gaffs. Everyone should be on the gaff program. All I know is uh, it's a good question, and I'm glad we've addressed it here on Ask Us a Question 8. That's well. Yeah. Can we uh, put a, a, a claim... And a, a, a self, what do you call it? A self-appraising rev up mm. and a diss together somehow? Oh, I think so. Definitely doable. Yeah. Fucking Let's go, you fucking pelicans. Yeah. <laughs> Let's go, you fucking yeah. cowards. Get a bit of green and yeah. gold up ya. Pull your finger out of your dot. And give it a fucking crack, cunt! <laughs> that's, yeah, a, like that. that's, that's, that's an all-time rebel. Well, that's what it is. Yeah, Let's see, now, that. if someone ever said that to me before an Olympic heat, there's no way I'm not coming in well, with I would rattle. Uh, uh, yeah, Kanoa would have spewed up his farm salmon. Yeah, yeah, no, no, no. <laughs> you know, no Kanoa, Kanoa's not one for the truth, mate. Oh, he, no. he doesn't want to have, be told to pull anything out of his corn. Not nah. fucking anything. Nah. Getting mate, put on uh, full blast. No good. Smithy, um, Mark Mono Stewart, uh, future Hall of Famer, five-time world champ, fucking the all-time core lord, Legend, uh, have we had him on the show yet? No, nah. oh, well, uh, it no. all kind of got lost in the uh, the, just the, the, celebrations and oh, shenanigans yeah. of the <laughs> the, 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 the adaptive <laughs> world surf championships. I know. I was going to say, uh, I, I, you did go underground after you accidentally took part oh, in yeah, the stolen uh, valor. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Doing a lap with Smith. Team Bircher. <laughs> In the uh, compression bandage, oh yeah, God. it was not a good look. And I had to go underground. All time right. favourite, all time favourite story. Getting caught up in the parade, oh. waving to the fucking patrons, the able-bodied patrons, as you're walking down the street. With to your, my chagrin, seeing a couple of swellians yeah. who weren't too pleased to see me. Don't worry about that, because they are people of truth. I believe Andy Beswick was one of them. Yeah. Oh, was he? Yeah. Yeah, Bez, I fucking enjoy your bon cron, mate. Get on, go and get a little bit in, out, in, out. You know you want it. Um, but Mono has uh, chipped in here. And it's a good question too. Now, surfing was on the brink of being accepted into the Paralympics. 10,000 signatures, I think, was going to get us over the line. Um, we were pushing it. Kelly Slater was pushing it. There was a lot of – there was a deep push to get this over happening. Mono has just given us a little exclusive here. How about given the LA28 Committee a surf for choosing rock climbing over parasurfing because it was more expensive to run the parasurfing – the IPC accepted parasurfing, but LA28 rejected it. Disgrace! What is a disgrace? What do you mean expensive? They're not short on a quid, the IOC. Mate, this is heavy. It's a fucking joke. They're spraying money left, right and centre like a drunkard in a urinal. Mate, it feels like this is a, a little chip in on the back of that. It feels like parasurfers have been used by the ISA to just get in the Olympics. So, oh, you know, because... Oh, that wouldn't surprise if me. If you've got... If you've got Olympics and Paralympics, makes your sport more attractive. Uh, you know, both uh, both arms of the Olympic fucking journey. If you've got both, your sport becomes more attractive to the whole organisation that approves your sport. Are you suggesting it's, Aguero has I'm behaved back unscrupulously? Mm, don't know, mate. But uh, I think uh, it is a disgrace. I back Mono. I'm calling out here for all Swellians to send... Uh, well, to get up and about on behalf of our fucking team, mate, our Paralympics uh, Olympians are the fucking most powerful surf team we have. Uh, Barney Miller, M. Dieters, Sam Bloom, uh, Jocelyn Newmuller, 
Uh, mono, obviously. The list goes on and on and on, mate. We are fucking champions in this realm, and we should be represented at the Olympics. This oh. is a fucking stitch up. We've the been marks. robbed of certain gold, multiple yeah. golds. Nah, well, uh, uh, to be to be continued, and we're going to get Mono, uh, uh, Taylor from Joshy Taylor from uh, Lennox. Oh yeah, yeah. So. Uh, We'll, we'll find out what's going on here because we've got multiple world champs and they deserve to be on the Olympic stage, in, in my view. Uh, ben Peck wants to know. Oh, yeah, here we go. Here we go again. Listen, Pecky, I'm going to bring this up because uh, it's a good excuse to understand, mate, how this fucking whole thing works with Ain't That Swell. We talked about it at the start of the year, but if you want to know why we run gambling ads... When it goes against everything we claim, in inverted commas, to stand for, it's because this shit is fucking time consuming. It ain't fucking free. No one's paying us, bro. Jump on the Patreon, which uh, Saucy does suggest here to Benny. Get on there, bro. No gambling ads, no ads whatsoever. If you want to fucking have this experience without the fucking gambling ads, go for it. But, mate, in the meantime, we'll use that gambling money to fucking send messages, positive change, hope, and healthy life choices, bro. Mm. I'm not Captain Hook living in Never Neverland eating bowls of fucking oxygen for dinner, you <laughs> silly cunt. Cough up! Uh, but anyway, good on you, Benny. Hopefully that was yeah, well, a, a question steered towards enlightening those who might not appreciate just how much fucking work goes into this thing. But up the swell ends, we love you. Um, oh, yeah, look, there was a few people going, there's no such thing as a free lunch, mate, just in response fucking to Fucking up, unless you're Captain Hook and fucking Never Neverland eating bowls of fucking oxygen, can't. Uh, it's good, fucking gold, can't. Good one here from Brett Hardy, Smithy. Uh, oh, I'm yeah. hoping it is oh, the no, no doubt it Brett is. Hardy, you know? What, what a dinner it is. Fucking the Hardys. The Hardballs dynasty. Mm, rock hard, love scrotes. Love the lot of them. On the boog, on the fucking plank, on the slabs. Hey, that's, in the, fucking that's the only guy on. ever to have a cover on. On both a stick mag and a book mag. Oh, what a mad, what a mad dog! Think about that. That's How huge. fucking nuts that is! Yeah, he's a fucking lord. So Hardy wants to know who is the ray gun of surfing. <laughs> ray mm. gun being the great Australian Olympian who put us on the world map mm. uh, with that incredible performance in the breakdancing division of the Olympics. Look, I had a good hard think about this. Uh, it's almost the puckerist, isn't it? Well, that Chopu in, on the Olympic much. stage. I mean, who has? Oh, yeah, okay. Who's covered saying. themselves in more muck and disgrace mm. than the two time world champ slash yeah. coward? Mm. The it's hopes of a nation Chiyupa. resting Uh-oh. on the, the shoulders on, the, on this international stage only to be. Oh, shoulders crazy. resting on the unwashed corn. Mm. Uh, a big dinner plate of disgrace and disgust teetering on his swollen, prolapsed, infected, mm. in desperate need of a. Polynesian gurney in cornhole. I was thinking uh, just in uh, pure biomechanics, not so much the, uh, the, the the larger narrative of, of the comparison, but in the pure biomechanics, I think Russell Winter would go Ooh. close. Very spasmodic in his attack, mm. but fully committed. Mm. Fully committed. Uh, yeah, dead set. Uh, looked seizure-ish at times, but fucking no doubting the commitment. So, yeah, I reckon there's a ray gun there. Uh, mm. Anyone else spring to mind with that sort of like quick twitch, like, you know, over the top, mad expression going um, on in the surfing? Uh, the Paderats brothers were pretty aggressive oh, on those Neko. one foot front side hammers on the uh, foam. Very Ray Gunnish. Uh, unsurprising to see his lower back give out and he uh, give in to the allure of steroids for a period. I mean, fuck, how many of those front side hammers mm. did he throw in his career? More than. Some kind of circus freak throwing spinning axes yeah. at a human spinning around I on like a that. wheel. It was what? Yeah. And was, I dare say he was a bit of a ray gun uh, under the covers as well from all ooh. reports. <laughs> I think he was throwing hammers around <laughs> Brazilian and Northern Beaches beach breaks. Yeah. Fuck pew, 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 pew. You don't want to be on the end of a <laughs> hammer time from the Brazilian oh, yeah. specialist. I'm like a tiger. <laughs> Rip you apart and pepper oh. your hole like... Uh, mm. Serbian on a jackhammer on a building site yeah. in Western Sydney. Love it. I don't know if this is Turv. I think it is. Turv uh, has a huge exclusive out of uh, Tahiti, the Olympics, the gift that keeps on giving, Smithy. Word on the street is that the Vortex Shaman has been indulging in breast milk ah. to try and gain a competitive edge over his fellow competitors. Heard Gabby blowing up about it in a post-heat interview claiming it is borderline doping. Now... 
look. Scandalous allegation. Scandalous allegation. And but if true, uh, yeah. I mean, it's big you, news. Can you blame and him? I mean, well, no. And uh, you can't blame him. <laughs> and it is an ingenious way to get around Wada's doping rules, stringent doping rules, as Vasco Ribeiro found out. Mm. Uh, I mean, once it's been filtered through the memory glands of your missus, mm. uh, perhaps it only uh, is just the purest of serum, purest of roided up. EPO doped mm. creme de la creme of banned chronic. Well, I think uh, Gabby is only blowing up here because I would say most of the uh, the memories that he clutches onto are just full of plastic or yeah. Silly. So I mean, what what nutrients is he getting out of that? Fuck so all. He's, he's, he's clearly incensed to that Robbo's getting some sort of benefit, uh, performance benefit, and from a hot Brazilian, no from less colostrum. Couldn't, yeah. couldn't have gone any worse Brazilian for you, Gabby. Yeah, it's a, it's you had a, a whole call. country to choose from, and you just chose nothing but plastic bolt-ons to get your nutrients from. Well, mm. more fool you. There's the Osprey. Uh, can you do a, speaking of the Vortex Shaman, can you do a song uh, about our Lord and Saviour? Well said, uh, the Osprey. Because I do see the Vortex Shaman as our Lord and Saviour. I do think... A song is uh, it's it's well overdue, Smithy. We actually haven't put pen to paper and uh, pulled out the lute and the mandolin and, and penned uh, any sonnets lately to our great heroes oh. of, of this generation. Parco's got one, obviously. Uh, Mick's got one. Yeah, there's a couple of other. Cal Robbo. Oh, That's we haven't a, heard that one for no, a while. Should that, we whack it on? Oh, yeah, whack it on. Yeah. But, yeah, I reckon we, uh, we, we, get, we, we get on the, uh, the quill. And we pull out our music paper and we, we pen a few more sonnets to these great champions. Oh, that's now. it. Let's burn the midnight oil, get a bit of creative juices flowing, mm. get the crystals out, charge them up and, and really suck some of that collective hive mind down from mm. the ether and pump it because straight in the shaman's tyres. Let's fucking go, yeah, cunt. Yeah, 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 yeah. Also, um, Sally Fitz, so overdue. Let's fucking go, cunt. <laughs> Let's go, Grits Gibbon. <laughs> fucking oath, bruh. <laughs> Art Put a f- pair of boots on your dog. <laughs> Sorry. The Art of Flight Co. Um, you know, he's just chipping in here. I'm tempted to click on this, actually. Art of Flight Co. Is this this... Uh, it's Michael Geesey. Geeky. He's an aerial photographer. Fuck, he does some good work. Look at this. Wow. Wow, is this Art not... Art of Flight Co. Is this not the uh, Art of Flight that produced... Was it Sean White's film or yeah, something? Yeah, I like don't that? think it is, but it's um, he's got some wonderful stuff. Oh, he's got your old stomping ground, Bondi Icebergs there. Oh, the Bergs, yeah, yeah nice, nice, so well played. He knows his stuff on your art of flight, but he wants to know. You know, back in the day, according to the mags, you could never get near the breaks in South Oz without copping the wrath of locals, and now every surf edit or film, it's the first place they go. Uh, with multiple filmers too, mind you. Uh, was it all wives' tales? Having the locals lose their fucking agates back in the day? The noisy surfer says, well, apparently there's a few of them stopped smoking bongs for breakfast and pulled a root for once, caught on, and it stopped them being so weird. Mm. So uh, I think there's plenty of beef down there. I remember um, I remember a, a Vulcan trip heading down there, uh, you know, Mitchie Colborn. Aussie. Oh, yeah, that's uh, an, uh, that end up in psychic migration. Maybe Ballaram was down there, or uh, yeah, I can't remember, but um, Tom Carey was down there, and Oz was saying they pulled up at a pretty notorious heavy spot, really pumping, no one out. Uh, they were putting fins in, feeling a bit tentative, and this guy said g'day to him, then got in his car and just did a fucking huge donut and just shouted him in rocks as he fucking pulled out. Well played. <laughs> Intentional. So I think there is beef um, for that entire zone, mate. Like, it's not a free-for-all down there. Do not make that mistake. Mm. Foolish surf filmers and pro surfers killing the goose that laid the golden egg. You fools! Mm. You fools! Exactly. Uh, got no no words for that disgrace! Can't believe it. Beef O'Keefe, Smivy. Uh, he's got a, a Gabrielle uh, Medina-like Olympic viral shot as his uh, little... Oh, yeah. A little biopic here. That's very nice. And on your beefy. Thanks for listening. Hope you're having a good day, mate. Nice little family. Spend some time on the boats. Well done, brother. Um, he wants to know who is more honourable, Billy Kemper 
or Lance Burkhart? <laughs> Comparing a reigning big wave world champion to a fictional Jaws winner. Villain mm. from a buried cult classic is a real slap in the face, a radioactive piss in the face. Mm. Dare I say but it you more. know what he's referring to there. Have you copped uh, How Surfers Get Paid yet? The latest I haven't there? copped it. No, okay, so uh, it's called The Day Big Wave Camaraderie Died. Mm, I did and see it, it. It's all about this uh, final um, that happened, the very first final that Billy Kemper found himself in uh, against Shane Dorian, Greg Long. Uh, fucking Albie Leia, uh, Gabriel Villaran, Shane. Uh, did I say Shane Dorian? There's a couple of others that heavy hitters out there. And there's a leggy pool. Mm, well, there's a there's a, a decision that gets made, and there's a fucking renege on that decision at the end of the event, and uh, it all comes apart from there. And um, yeah, so uh, the question doesn't just come out of the blue. It's it's got context. I suggest going and watching that series. Fucking incredible. Worth the pennies on Stab Premium. Uh, we'll come back to that once, maybe once you've had a look. But I think Billy actually comes out okay. He comes out okay. Why the fuck would you? Yeah, anyway, you'll see. Um, let's have a look here. Lukey Dukester wants to know, we need to talk about surf commentary. We're, uh, well, we, we're always talking about surf commentary, Smithy. But we're watching uh, the 50-inch plasma in ultra-high-def TV. Current format of just describing every turn, pump and wiggle. It's fucking cooked as, bro. And he wants to know, can we just agree that dropping the volume of the words and going to a more natural conversational approach about things would be more zen? Dropping the volume? That's a disgrace. What is this guy talking about? Mm. I want my surf talk delivered with screamo intensity, hemorrhoid bursting vigor, Mm. and aneurysm... Creating analysis. Well, and look, anything less is just a disgrace. I think the uh, Olympic broadcasting uh, had real high watermarks. BL is fucking almost without peer how good oh, he is. Mate. I He's can't so believe it's good. not butter. He's that buttery. Yeah, and Max, Maxi uh, S here says the great and powerful BL made a well overdue commentary comeback for the Olympics, and it was skits. And everyone who's ever duck dived loves the shit out of it. Based on those undisputed facts, what possible reason would the Woz have not bringing back BL? And why the fuck have they already done it? Well said. Look. Well, they're a headless I, chook. They're running around yeah. in chaos ever since ELO bounced. Uh, it's yeah. just been a, a ship without a captain veering dangerously close to pure irrelevance uh, and just sinking straight down the Look, man, I, I don't know. I don't know what. BL the- could write the ship. Get him, get him at the helm. BL is so insightful, helm. so up and into it. He's frothing out of his fucking gird. Like, it, it's a no-brainer. His insights are the fucking stuff that you want to know in a, in a heat. He had some of the Pre, great stories. During and broadcast. post, he sets the tone, gets the narrative right. I mean, uh, obviously biased, but fucking I miss Ronnie from the broadcast. Once, as soon as the Aussie leg leaves, it feels like it's struggling to hold on. I mean, for an Australian audience, for sure. I think I can say that comfortably. It's me. Yeah. Well, yeah. I'm all about having Australian representation in a not too corporate way. Mm. So Ronnie's great. BL's great. Yeah. Uh, you know, a bit of laconic humour. Yeah. Uh, you know, we grow up watching sports with a similar tempo to surfing, mm. like cricket. Yep. Uh, we know how to spin a yarn. Yep. BL spun some absolute belters. Uh, my favourite being the one about uh, winning a comp in Durban in the 80s, back when the crew used to mm. stay at Graham Smith's G-Force, yep. Geordie Smith's dad, and he actually gave his Durban trophy to right. a young child Geordie. Wow. Uh, I love yarns like that. And just like their history, like people mm. who've been there and done it and they've got all the tidbits and bells and whistles and uh, the, the classic insights to go with the classic yarns. So, yeah, like BL just ticks every box. He's fucking iconic. He does, mate. He does. Uh, 88 yeah, world champ I mean, and a proper call lord who doesn't mind to polish off a golden cone piece yeah, or two. Yeah. Look, I, I don't know. I don't know what's going on with the commentary. Don't have an answer. I wish I had the truth. I can't give it. Don't know what's up. But, you know, it's fun. Fun when you get to do it. I actually, I did watch the Hello Sport and Ronnie podcast during the Olympics. Fuck, it was just unreal, man. She's had a good time doing it. It's fun. 
Dan LK wants to know, um, hey, boys, got a question for you. Despite my worst efforts, I'm not finding much success getting backside tubes. As you can imagine, my corn is getting dangerously filthy and Ooh. potentially necrotic. Oh, no. <sighs> Yuck. I desperately need to drag myself clean. Hence, I wonder, do artificial tubes have the same rinsing quality as their saltwater cousins? Chlorine is known as a disinfectant, but I am concerned that some strange chemistry may occur and only make things worse. Please guide me, UTFS. Look, uh, I feel like chlorine is a good place to start if you haven't got your technique down. It might be a little bit harsh on the coit, though. It could. Uh, You might want to ease yourself into it. At least maybe uh, a gentle, warm salt water bathe, you know, Mm. before you go into the chlorine just to remove a bit of the detritus, start to to soften the scab. Mm. Uh, And Yeah, Yeah, you you don't want poo dreads. Poo dreads are a nasty thing to try and you, you, to cut them out. You still got that little nub that you got to cut through with the razors. It's not yeah. good, Smitty. You don't want a, a full no. blown dreadlock dag fest when you're trying to drag. Mm. You don't want to drag dag. You born. do not want to drag dag. Drag and dag is the number one cause of anal fissures and really yeah. awful. Yeah. Corn eye is yeah, what they call it. It is. And yeah. when it rips, it rips a big chunk oh, of skin with it. Yeah. It rips, yeah. Yeah, yeah. You're going home uh, like you're riding a horse. It's 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 a wide-legged. You're sitting on a 44-gallon drum, yeah. mate. A reverse scalping, I think they yeah, call it. Yeah, that's right. Uh, I, look, I think if your dot is in all sorts, uh, hit the pool, hit the pool. Just get some shampoo or conditioner or something on the first. You've got to soften it up. Yeah, yeah. Have a, a, a big tube of sorbel in ready to go after, mm. too. Cause it's going to be red. It's going to be raw. Expect a bit of pain and discomfort, but discomfort's your friend. It is. You've got to rinse it at some point, mate. Um, all right, Smivy, I think we're at the end here. Uh, this is our last one. It's from Finbar. Unless you got a couple. Have you got a couple? Well, there's a couple in here, but there you go. All right. Well, Finbar wants to know, uh, who would win in a fight? Pedro Scooby on meth or John John in his hooded rashy? <laughs> Look, I've never seen John John fight, but clearly the guy is fearless. Uh, I don't know if he does jujitsu or any of that extra stuff, but any cunt with a neck beard who fucking surfs, you know, 15 to 18 foot outside fucking poops is going to have some a little bit of grit about him in a fucking stink, surely. Oh, mate, his aura is so strong. Mm. Uh, as soon as Pedro Scooby goes to lay hands on him, he's just going to get blasted as if he, uh, yeah. as if John John was that Street Fighter character blanker. Mm. You know, he's oh, yeah, yeah, pulsating yeah. Pulsating yeah. electricity. That's it. Uh, so you can bet some coward... Brazilian so-called air quote big wave legend. Mm. He's just going to get blasted in the ether by this golden child who's packed more cones than yeah. Scooby's had cold acai berry mixes. And you'd imagine that meth, disgrace, that meth mongo disgrace. strength doesn't last too long. Like you no. might get up and about for a, a, a you know a hot moment where you're capable of uh, murder or strangulation or something like that, but it ain't lasting, Smithy. And the pure energy of John John is going to shine through and fucking bury the cunt. No doubt about it. You'll bury that turncoat, Brazo, so-called <laughs> pundit. What a disgrace. Oh, come on, mate. Come on, mate. Look at the stats and just see it for what it is. There's no conspiracy here, Smivy. There's just you and me and the truth. Me, you and the truth. And I'll tell you, I walked past this cunt in a fucking red and white skivvy out the front. Mm. And he said, where's me fucking glasses? And uh, I, I believe you're wearing them. So, yeah, yeah Wally wants his glasses back. <laughs> We done, bro. What? Are, any last words for the swellings? We never say goodbye normally. We just we go out on a laugh. What, what do you reckon? Get on the Patreon if you fucking back us. Uh, I believe the phrase was coined earlier in the program. Mm. But let's fucking go! Let's go! Fucking go!